steal that in the sword worlds? Sure is. May not have one for a steal. In which case, I'm just going to generate one. In which case, I'll just pick one and generate for the for the adventure. Then, I'm just going to check the five sisters see if it gets there there before I do it. No. Excalibur it is. This is just going to represent uh, steel. And the fourth and final stop is Olympia. Oh, that might be in one yen now that I look at it. L U N. There she is, and generate her. All right, guys. So, and I'm sorry if I'm bouncing the screens all over the place on you. Is it is it translating well? What what you guys are seeing me do? Oh, kind of. Right. So I got um five tabs. But you, you know, I don't know if you could see the tabs or not. Uh, the second t tab I have open is the first stop on the way, which is Enos. The second tab is uh, Calibog, and then Steel, and then Olympia. So what I'll show you is the cost of fuel in port and what they're looking for. Now maybe, see this doesn't even give me uh, unique um, web addresses, so I couldn't even share the links to you guys. So in Enos, this is the desired goods. And then you guys still have that chart I shared of available trade goods in the Discord. You may have to download that picture and open up in a new screen. Second. All right, I got it. So let's take basic consumables. The base price here in Flamirion. Is that 2000 where the base price in Enos is also 2000 So unless you could get the modifier, which is going to be a DC-15, to get it down to 1300 you're not going to stand to gain anything for that. Uh, that current price, is that what it is without a modifier or with a modifier? You know, that's got me rethinking because everything matches up, right? The base price. So base price must be the, I don't, I'm not sure what their source is. 
things. So let me take a look at something. So the D, like there's the the DM's different for the purchase versus the sale, though, right? So that could help us. Yes, that could. Yes, that's how I was reading it. It was if you hit that that, that modified roll, then that would be the uh, the adjusted price. Otherwise, you sell uh, it for okay. the base price. Yeah, but it'd be the other way. Because what I'm wondering it. is, I do agree with that. Like, you know, you get that 125 percent if we hit that modifier. But what about like, say, your top there? You have a hundred thousand, and the price modifier is eighty percent. So you're telling me that I'm rolling to hit a modifier to get eighty thousand and lose twenty thousand? Yeah, that's right. You're losing money if you hit that modifier, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So that'd be. I'm I'm rereading this. The base price is what it is, flat out in the game. The modified roll, is what you'll get if you negotiate the deal. So you would lose your your ass. So only only look at the right three columns. So there's going to be stuff that's definitely just not worth doing. Because first you got to make the the modified roll for the negotiation. If you get that roll, then you're, that's the price you're going to get. Yeah, yeah. This guy can just said that's the galactic standard and that base price. So anything with like above 100% or 100% it's not worth negotiating then? Yeah, well, anything both. Yeah, to purchase, but then when you sell it at the desired destination, then you want to exceed 100%. Oh, okay. I'm still, I'm trying to make sure I'm wrapping my head around this right. So let's just work on basic consumables as an example. Yeah, if you guys negotiate, yeah, so let's look at what I, the available trade goods in Flamerian. That's the one I posted in Discord. Right, right, yeah. If you guys negotiate the purchase, the, the modified roll on you if you guys negotiate uh, is an eight. If you get it, you're going to pay the flat 100%, whatever the galactic standard is. So you'd pay 10,000 uh, credits a ton. If you were to try to sell it in Enos, so go to that screen, the basic consumables, if you negotiated it, you're going to lose 35% on your sale. Right, because it's at a 65% rate. I guess I'm just, I don't know, I'm just not understanding. Can you yeah, look at go both to, of the tables and give me an idea of what would be a good deal? Oh, I think this is probably set up so that you don't like buy and sell the same goods to try and, I guess, get an advantage on the price. That's what I was trying to do. Yeah, but now here, this is the final destination. If you were to get basic consumables here and hold them the whole way, now you could, now you could just eke out twenty one hundred if you if you hit that. Score modified role to sell to negotiate the sale which is super high it's ridiculous yeah that's a ridiculously high modified role yeah so basic consumable just to get a hundred piracy is looking better all the time for this real no wonder everyone goes to piracy let's look at petrochemicals because that one has a 55 percent it's off the, the base price so petrochemicals here in full marion 
All right, so that looks like a good one in Enos because that's if you negotiate a sale, even though it's the DC's eleven, it's you're going to get a hundred percent return, which is almost a forty five percent gain on petrochemicals, right? Uh, so the idea is to buy them in like a low price port and then sell them in another. Yeah, and then you know, if you guys don't want to play this way, we don't have to. It's just it's an it's another way to gain income to pay for the ship. Hey, yeah, I like. It. I just want to make. I mean, work. yeah, I would like to. It just doesn't. I don't understand that there's a practical way to do so because I'm looking at available trade goods, petrochemicals. Got to make a modified hole of 17 to be able to purchase at 55%, which would be 5,500. Keep it the whole way. Then go and possibly sell it at either the base price of... Are the base prices the same at all the uh, ports? Petrochemicals. Yeah, I'll flip then through because we, we could see that. But petrochemicals. Then if we made the 11. Petrochemicals, 10,000. 10,000. Yeah, so base, base is the same. I'm going to scroll up just to make sure. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't give me any other hints to this. And they're they're D three rolls, is that right? Two D. So if if um, are there like any transaction costs, or are these are just are we doing away with that? So like, say we buy petrochemicals at ten thousand, we go to another port that allows you to sell it at or you know or at a higher price. Um, I'm just making up an example. Um, if we fail the roll, we can only sell it at ten thousand. Would we um, incur any like uh, transaction costs, or would it just be like a one for one thing? No. So if you if you fail to sell it, it doesn't sell, and then then what it's costing you is the uh, the cargo space on your ship. All right. So we hit the next port, try to sell it again, right? Yeah, but if you free it up, then you have the opportunity. So I'll scroll up on this port. Then they have available trade goods. And then you guys would make a return route. That's something you got to plan. Hey, we need to count it. <laughs> um, these rules are based off of what skill broker or is this... Uh... So, so we need like a broker check. Yeah, everything says it says broker. Do we have anybody with the broker skill? Not yeah, I had it at one with my social. It's a plus two. Yeah. But I thought maybe uh, Jeff's character. I, I care. Yeah, I'm checking his right now because I could I could roll it for him as well. No, he doesn't have broker. He has diplomat. Yeah, that's what I've got. <clears throat> so I've got a one in diplomat, which may help. Yeah, I only have streetwise. Well, uh, and then is that streetwise? I got Carouse, uh, diplomat, and streetwise. And broker. I'm gonna do one thing. You guys are watching the Discord. And apparently, advocate. I have actually no idea what that does. Just pick one. I could check allow illegal goods. We are now spice traders, boys. I already have drugs on me. I know. 
Are you sharing with the crowd? Oh, dude, yeah, I bought a ton. I have, like, a whole bunch in one of my lockers, and then I have just some on me. I carry at least two recreational drugs on me at all times. Plus two stim packs just to use just because, like, who needs to wait till you're really tired, man? Stim up every now and again. Yeah, they got it's good for you. Legal cybernetics, illegal drugs, and illegal luxuries. I mean, I hate illegally using stims, but damn, do I love the way they smell. Oh, wait, there's like a uh, thing for desired goods. Yeah, that's what I'm showing you guys on the comparison. So you have the available goods on one end, but then the desired at the other. Those are the things that you could sell. That, you know, that's why using petrochemicals look like the best example. So it looked like you had the most to gain. But the DC to, to purchase it was really high, it was 17. So it, just to role play how that would work, just to even get that, we'd have to do a chain. Uh, you know, someone's going to have to go out and crowds with the merchant, right? Get them drunk. All right, if we get a success on that, then it adds a plus one to the modifier. Then I'm going to need, you know, someone maybe uh, to get their 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 standing in the starport in trouble. And then, and then a diplomat to resolve that. To the, then that increases the standing with your with this guy, and now you're at a plus two. That's 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 crazy example. Just so you could hit that seventeen though. You're still talking about box cars. Yeah, I might have to hold off on the trading and like watch a few videos, like on how to how the trading works because there's got to be a way to make it work for you otherwise you know you're not going to put it in the game yeah Just maybe gotta... yeah this is this is much more designed if we're all gathered around a kitchen table together and i get to hand out the, the papers deal a little bit harder on this platform it's just looking at the raw numbers like Wow. Looking at the raw numbers, nobody would trade. If that's the way, it, if that's. Cause I'm just taking like even to get petrochemicals, which was like the 55 percent one. Yeah. That's a DM two plus my two. 17 minus 4, 13. That's somehow I got to get a 13 on a 2d6 roll. Yep. So, yeah, we would be chaining a lot of shit together to get there. And now, granted, that's a 55% price modifier. So, that's probably. Yeah, they, whoever in the station knows that it's dirt cheap if you get it or, or you know. They got a glut of it. And that sell side of that petrochemical is like a 17. Like there's, there's no way in hell unless we've got like a pro negotiator. <laughs> I'm thinking it's got to be, it's got to be done by chaining. I don't see any other way you can make these rolls. It's got to be set up to like make that part of like the campaign. Like. It's expecting you to do chained rolls like that. Yeah, or or somebody could have actually made a um, a, a player character focusing on brokerage skills, like a merchant. Nobody went the merchant route. Yeah, so I, mean, I went down there, but I was only in it the one that one round, right? So that's yeah. what gave me like I think that's what gave me diplomat and all. So it helped a little. 
Well, I mean, even if you went all the way down that road, like the for the highest you could start off with as a starting level character would be six. Well, I'm adding in the uh, like the social skill oh, adjustment yeah. too. Yeah, you're right. Which means even on a lot of these rolls, you're still stuck making way above your average skill check modifier with based on 2d6 i mean because your average roll is going to be seven at all times on a 2d6 scale so i think yeah i think I, I, I mean i'll look into it a little more and i'm definitely going to like gives me something to read and look into now but i'm i'm guessing this has to be like a chain skill this is assuming some kind of I'm, I'm assuming it's not set up for you just to walk in and be like boom here's my barter roll that i get it nope crap and then, you know, some of the assumption, too, is if you guys, on a mission, you gain a cargo hold of loot, right? Then you just, you hold on to it until you find a station with desired goods, and it's a lot easier in just one way. Right. But yeah, I just wanted to introduce this option to the game as, as adding another layer to, to Traveler. Yeah, I like, okay, I yeah, like that uh, a lot, actually. We just got to figure it out. Yep. Right. I mean, exactly. Keep your, ship, keep your ship running while you find other interesting things to do. And I can't imagine that like you're gonna make honestly too much huge money doing this because I'm assuming this is kind of like some of the back end stuff, you know, like while we're doing stuff and running around, it's like, well, we're taking these people to this planet. We might as well grab some goods and make you know a cheap little bit of profit while we're at it. Right, and it's like a you know it's a background arc for you, right? We're we're doing this thing, and oh, we stop at this one planet, and all hell breaks loose on something else altogether. Yeah, so right, and all of a sudden we end up with some spices or something like that. Just so everybody remembers, that's how much we were charging ahead for where they could sleep. Well, I mean, we also charged that because we had absolutely no clue what it cost to actually transport somebody because we were in the middle of a thing and didn't want to look it up. Now it's a little different. How much does it cost for air for that person for a jump? How much does it cost for food for that person? You know, how much does it actually cost us to We didn't to say house... we were going to give them food. We said we were going to give them a ride. Well, maybe they'll they pay better more bring if we food. offer them food. Does it take like two well, uh, weeks to do like a That depends. Are they expecting food? Are they not expecting food? Can we charge more for the food? Maybe we can incorporate that in the price for the beds. Yeah, that, 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 exactly. You know, if we cook them. Is the going to be serving them? Uh, no, he's going to be drinking. I mean, because we can charge at least a decent amount for food. We have an excellent chef. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not saying like later on we shouldn't get all that figured out. Well, let me give you guys the down and dirty then, because each each jump to you do is twenty tons, which requires a refuel before your next jump because you only have 23 tons of, of fuel so let me just uh, give you the estimate of what it is to get jumped one way to their destination and that'll give you a better idea of how you want to price this course whatever I did and made it all go away oh 
here we go. Yeah, I see the table. It's one more time. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just going to pick one planet and make it a flat rate. Of course, of course, this planet has a high port and low port <laughs> fuel costs. You guys gonna go the cheap way the whole way? I think starting off, we don't have a. Do we have a ton of choice? <laughs> yeah, much of an option. So unrefined fuel is gonna be at a hundred gold uh, or hundred gold. Damn it, Greg! Credits. Hundred credits uh, per ton. So if you're refueling at twenty tons, that's uh, two thousand credits uh, per port that you stop at. And that's every jump. So every jump, we would have to stop and get two tons of fuel. Until we get bigger tanks. Well, it's 20, 20 tons of fuel. Yeah, your your fuel capacity is 23 tons. A two jump cost you uh, 20 tons. If you were, I could show you that too on the Scout Courier again. So if you, you open up that Scout Courier that I just linked in chat, the fuel consumption is all the way at the bottom. The, the fastest and most efficient is doing a two jump to Olympia, uh, which puts you on three three stops. You got to stop at Enos, Kalidbolg, and Steel on the way. So you're talking... Six thousand credits just to get you to Olympia. You, have, you currently got fuel tank, full fuel tanks. Let me. Is anybody else getting in there or looking at that carrier ship? Uh, I'm actually looking at the. Oh, yes, I did have an error opening that, but I went to Starships on the side and was able to open it. Oh, okay. No parts manual skagging. Yeah, fuck those pubs. Oh, wait, the Scout Courier has a fuel scheme. Under systems. What is it that you see? The Scout Courier has a fuel scoop. Well, it does have a fuel scoop. No, no, it's blanked out. It has a slot for one, but there's nothing on there. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, so 100 credits per ton, 20 tons needed per jump, three jumps to destination. And credits per tons times tons needed per jump times number of jumps needed to reach destination. That'll pretty much be a static uh, 
calculation needed every time. Yeah, for we do like anything. Yeah, it looks like um, I'm looking at a fart trader. At, if it has a fuel scoop, it does the sub-assembly swap for the fuel processor and cargo crane. It's an additional five tons. Um, the M drive, what does that do or take? You know, so that's the, uh, the difference... I, I equate that from the way I understand it to Star Trek. I don't know you have to be a Star Trek, but you have the warp drive, then you have the pulse pulse drive. So your M drive is your sublight speed. That's you just burn in burn like a rocket. Yep. And do we have to refuel that too? Yep. So that's why there's a little bit where you'll have three tons of fuel left. That should get you to a destination, assuming you don't punt a uh estrogen check real bad. So that should three tons of hydrogen should get you across any solar system. Um, it depletes faster if you're doing combat maneuvers or you know high risk uh, high maneuver items, but the three tons should be plenty to get you to speed uh, to a port, and then enough to the decrease your speed whether you're ascending through atmosphere or slowing down to prevent impact at a, an orbital station. Okay, do I have to keep track of that fuel too much or is it mostly just the jump fuel? Uh, you don't have to keep track of it unless unless we go way off course through to a terrible astrogen check or okay. astrogation check, sorry. All right, is there a cost for refilling the air, the life support system? That, that's easy. That's only 100 credits. Unless per person, on, unless, per ship. Per ship, unless you're on a system that doesn't have breathable oxygen. But then that, uh, then that fluctuates. And how long does that last? For your full for a full crew, your life support is good for uh, one month. All right, so one hundred credits for air per month. Yeah. Is that including all these people we're going to be taking with us? No, that's actually, it's really should be rolled up in the maintenance costs. I wouldn't really worry about that. That's how I'll, I'll consider it. Your maintenance cost is, is, uh, includes topic life support. For okay. Then I will not worry about that yeah. cost. What about food? Life support for six. So that's part of your maintenance cost for six. Okay. Okay, so don't got to worry about air. Don't got to worry about food. Really, it's just fuel. And the maintenance uh, per month. Yeah, so if you take these passengers, you guys need to determine if you're going to uh, project maintenance costs onto the passengers. Um, the costs. How many passengers are there? I believe it was four. Let me go back and read my notes that I made for the night session.
yeah, four planetary miners that are trying to get back to Olympia. Uh, Each jump takes one week in jump space. Yes. I'll tell you what we'll, what I'll do, guys, after this session, because um, you guys will visit all these places. I'll do print-ups, like hard, hard print-ups of the uh, the trade stuff for these these planets, and then um, that should help us kind of figure out creative ideas on how to make this work. That'll work because I'm going to watch some videos on how to do it, and then if I kind of have a few, like, hard copies, then I, I can kind of figure out maybe a few of the things we should at least go after between sessions so that way we're not doing so much math in session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking maybe a screen share would have worked, but yeah, it's not uh, not that easy. I mean, unless we do cargo, this is going to be pretty much everything we do for a whole month. That's... Now, remember, you guys were using downtime to spend on training, remember? Oh, yeah. I remember. I got it planned out, too. Yep, I just mean as far as like the the, uh, the ship getting them, you know, and jumping from one place to another and just getting fuel. That's everything. Hey, where are those uh, <clears throat> trade charts, Greg? Is that something that's in a like the the referee guide or something? Uh, no. What actually? Let me. I'll link that resource. I'll link both these resources to you guys in Discord, so you guys can look at it. Maybe you could make a better better judgment on how to use them. That map is still just amazing to me. I'm looking at that thing. <laughs> Whoever put the work behind that map is insane. If we want to break even for the month, we have to charge them individually 2,265.75 credits. That will make up the cost for the 6,000 in fuel, plus pay our uh, maintenance cost for the month. That that's the that's for them being on the ship the entire month. Actually, that would be technically them being on for four weeks. Right. But uh, so at so if a normal jumps ten days, right? Is that a, about what we said? You can, <laughs> you can maybe pare that down and get it to something affordable, but it's a hop by hop kind of deal. Well, actually, I honestly, I did each jump was a week. But if each jump is 10 days, the math still adds out early the same way. Because I considered it a week of downtime because I didn't know whether we were going to be able to pick up another job and do that within in one week. Well, you certainly don't want to lose money carrying people. That wouldn't do you any good. Well, what if we just dropped them off at the next place? Tell them we can at least get them away from here.
Well, I mean, that still puts us... Yeah, but we could do like a one jump thing for six or seven hundred credits, right? Instead of, and that, and we'd make a little bit on that, basically. If I understood what you said, right? Like, if it's a four week plan, it's a, and it's a one week jump, let's say, <clears throat> and we charge them a third of the four week, we make, you know, a third of a week in profit. If we brought that down to like one week and we just did one jump. Um, if we were willing to only charge them for one week of our one month maintenance costs plus 2,000 credits for the jump, then to break even, we need to charge them. 691.44 credits. So here's the thing though, right? We're doing the jump and the, so we're taking the maintenance and the fuel hit, whether we have people or not. Right? Yes, we are. So really we can carry, we could still, well, we don't necessarily want them to pay their share. We want them to subsidize our share. What I was giving you was the base cost to keep the ship running. That was with to keep the ship running at maintenance and none of us making any individual profit. For us to make any kind of individual profit, we'd have to charge them like bare minimum 2500 for the trip piece. Right, but that's assuming if we... Now, I'm just trying to make sure I'm following you. That's assuming we're not going anywhere. If we're going anyway and we don't take them, we still have to pay that cost. So if we take them and we make a thousand credits, we, we still come out in the good. If we're going anyway, is all I'm saying, right? If we were going anyway. Yeah. So if we're going somewhere anyway, I don't, I don't think we necessarily need to calculate the maintenance and fuel into their head count. The, the air they would certainly they're actually using the food i do using every business i've ever been a part of like that maintenance cost goes into what you charge your customer if i was like a traveling technician i have to account for the maintenance cost of my vehicle for one year and i have to put that into the charge that i'm going to charge a customer right but that's a different deal because you, you wouldn't be going to the customer unless they were paying you. this would right be but we wouldn't be we wouldn't be going to this planet if we didn't have people that need us to take them we have no reason to go there oh then i yeah i agree if we're going for them i agree they need to play, pay full boat plus a little i'm saying if we're take if we're going along on a trade mission and we're going to make money on that trade then we can take people on that jump and make a little bit of money on taxing people with us. Yeah, I, I, I agree. agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, if we're just taking them to take them, then they, yeah, it needs to be a full boat thing. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was, maybe I should have been clear at the beginning. That today's your first day where, where you're starting incurring maintenance costs on your ship right it's no longer free you got to still pay the uh the birthing fee and then or the docking fee and then uh, the only work that you know of right now is either trade or um you know uh selling selling uh, birthing space on your ship or a combination of the two i did throw in the scott services uh in the event you guys take it and you want the money, it's it's good money, but then it, it definitely affects any piracy moves that you make because all your sensors are tracking everything your ship does into their black box. Well, right now, I don't think we should do piracy because I don't think we have a strong concept of how to sell any of the goods that we would actually acquire anyway. That's a good point. It, nor the combat experience yet, really. Also a great point. <laughs> How long? So is this just a? It's like a monthly contract with that Scout Services thing. 
it is month to month, yeah. Yeah, so I feel like, I mean, I kind of think that's a good starting point as well. Right. Uh, here's, I got to throw this out there. There is a, you know, uh, small script. It's the contract rolls over if you don't visit a scout office to do the data dump. So if you guys go off grid and you're gone for three months before you find a scout service, that that black box is recording. Right. Yeah. So when we come back, is it th it's 30000 But yes, you will get paid for that. Honestly, I forgot about that black box. Well, I mean, theoretically, we could take them at cost to us. And how much did we say the jump was? Was it seven or ten days? Right. So I actually got the actual thing. It's one four one hundred forty eight plus sixty hours. That is the flex. So 148 hours is 6.16 days. So, so it's between seven, six and seven, eight days. Yeah, seven days is a good round number. We didn't I think we, that we have it right at that. Okay, I say we charge them our maintenance cost for the month, and we just we make our maintenance cost, we make our fuel cost. But I mean, we still got to come back. That's still six grand just to come back from where we're at. So even if we take that six grand to come back, that's a month and a half now we're talking about, and we make four thousand credits. Actually, take that back because we're halfway into our next month of maintenance cost. We actually are making two thousand five hundred credits. You might—I got to throw this out there because I have a, a truck dispatcher as a father. You guys can't think of just one way in returning empty. You may have to think about we we gonna re, retrade coming out of our destination. That is true. We got to have something to do on the way back. And I'll roll up the same thing I did here. I'm going to roll on a table to see passengers. And then hopefully by that, the next session, when you guys may be ready to return, we'll have a trade, but a better idea of how trade works. I'm going to, stop my stream on discord so i gotta look at some other stuff that doesn't need to be shared i think we're pretty much done with that done done with that yeah we're done with that for now so are we good to take them there at cost and make our 10 grand and make our profit on the uh, sensor sweeps? Or do we want to try and make a little bit of profit off these people? I don't see a reason not to go from 2265. We're already too so close to 2500, just around 2500. That gives us bargaining room. If they want to go, or they want to go lower, we can cut 200 off the price, go down to 23. And we're making chump change off it. We can go down to 2265 a piece and we're making absolutely nothing off it. I say we go 2300 is the lowest cost period because then that allows us to because we're we're going to have a birthing cost at the next place too so and if we assume it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 credits a day and we stay for a week now we're talking we have a birthing cost of seven at least 70 credits oh so, yeah let me go back there's actually and there's usually a one-time fee as well I'll tell you what that is i think it was 50 credits here in full marion 
Uh, what about keeping the negotiations open and then as soon as like the ship leaves, um, we can show them the airlock and then demand our price? That's fine, but then nobody will ever travel with us again because when they get when they're going, news travels fast. So, I mean, if you're only worried about making money one time in your life, I mean, sure, I guess that's all right. If you'd like to do this more than once, I suggest not doing that. Written costs can go up to 100 per day and up to 500 uh, per dock, just two dock. But it is, that's only, that's some, your final destination, to be honest. It's more like Flammarion 20 and 10. Yeah, 500 and 100, or 300 and 100, 20 and 10. 20 and 10. Yeah, it could be high. So I, I would I would estimate at least 1,000 credits just for docking fees. And, and associated uh, costs. Then I definitely suggest we stand firm at 2,500 per passenger. Otherwise, we're losing money. And exactly. in fact, at 25, at 2,500 per person, we're not making no money off the trip. All of our money that ha that we have to be made on this trip is going to be made from that box collecting information. Okay, and that twenty five hundred includes like not only the beds but also like the cargo or whatever they're carrying with them. That twenty five hundred will include them, like sleeping on the cargo hold, and any food they want to bring with them, and any cargo they want to bring with them. That twenty five hundred will not include us preparing food for them. It will not include them sleeping in our sleeping quarters. Oh, okay. So it's just take them from point A to point B. Yup, that's a mat on the floor. Eat what you bring with you. If they want us to prepare food for them too, that price is going to go up. Maybe we should have like alternatives. Like that would be like the base thing. And then maybe if they want us to prepare food and other things for them, we would charge like maybe, um, I'm just throwing a number out there, like maybe 3,000 or something like that, or 3,500. I guess it depends on like, what would your character consider a good cost to Give up your bed to a passenger to sleep on a hard floor in the core cargo hold for three weeks. I mean, any of us could do it. Well, I don't think like my character would mind that much since he was Marine and probably went through like some insane training already. But I don't know, I was just throwing it out there in case like... No, it's definitely legit. I'm just saying we have, I guess we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have two that we could open up. I mean, unless we're turning that like into the lounge. You guys aren't hot wrecking. Someone's got to be working while someone's sleeping. That's a fair point. No sailors, Hera. Well, yeah, but no. Danielle is definitely not sharing a bed with one of you stinky fucks. Um, excuse me? I smell great. I'm the only one that actually brought a washing machine with me. And probably...
probably extra pairs of clothes. And my bed don't stink because it's an anti-gravity king-size bed. That means it so stink. anyone that like hot, anyone that hot racks with me, you're hot racking in style. But I'm definitely going to charge like extra if like some of the people want to stay in my room. <laughs> But I mean, now we're just getting esoteric with it. I I still think twenty five hundred is a is a base price. Twenty five hundred should cover, like I said, everything, and then now birthing costs. I was willing to go down to twenty three hundred, but honestly, I was not thinking about birthing costs when we get to where we're going. Now that I know what some average birthing costs are, I think twenty five hundred is fair. It's a heck of a trip. I say we stand pretty firm at twenty five hundred. So who's going to negotiate it with these guys then? Is that what you, or are we guys still win on a quorum on this? I'm good with it. Yeah, it works for me. I'm going to, I'll go tell them what the price is. I don't know how much negotiate there is. Unless I just start off at three thousand, let them negotiate down to twenty five hundred, so they feel good about themselves. Yeah. Maybe so, they negotiate really bad, and we get us some extra cash. I agree. We could do food for extra. I have a gourmet chef. Well, I have a gourmet chef bot. They want to know that if you're serving them in cargo, though. Tastes just as good in the cargo bay as it does on the nice floor. But you're right. They wouldn't know it's a bot. They would. It could, it, who cares? When it comes Hello. through the door, it's, it it looks good and it's Hello. theirs. Hello. 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 Hi. 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 That is true. I could Hi. charge extra for Hi. singing because Hi. I don't really have any marketable Hi. skills on a Hi. ship. To be honest with you. So, all right, we want to do 3,500 for meals. Three thousand for no meals. That gives them 500 in bargaining room as well. Tommy, the first skill. Hey guys, I, I heard last week there may have been some test difficulties that were getting screwed up. If you see something that's not average or routine, let me know if, if you want to confirm. All right, I guess what does it consider average and routine? Uh, six and eight. You look okay, down yeah, at the bottom were... of your screen, it shows it there. Okay, yeah, there were tons of tens last week, and I was like, oh. I know I know I said it for something on one of our hill climbs, so I felt that was at the end of the session, but it, it could have been off at some point. Oh Biggie, all right. I will uh anybody else sociable and nice looking that wants to go with me, that's good and clean cut. Yeah. 
I, I made a her a Yelp and then an electronic or something. All right, you come with me. I guess, sorry, I'm ha if someone's talking, I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah, I think it was Penn. So, like Kelvin? Said, like Kelvin yeah. Alright, Kelvin, come with me. Cool. Yeah, he dropped out of uh, voice, though. Alright. But I got it. Alright, cool. I will uh, head out to go talk to these travelers. So, they're kind of, there's, there's a, uh, you know, just like any airport. There's a, a waiting area where people are waiting to board, um, although nothing goes out regularly. They, um, I'm going to set the task difficulty to six to broker for the high. Should be pretty easy because uh, they, they don't have very many options coming out of Flamerion. And uh, I'll, I'll keep the other part to myself. All right. Um, actually, before I broker with them, so you said this is like a whole area with people looking for transports out of here? Well, a lot of them are coming and going. There's transports coming and going in Flamerian, but, you know, not not everybody's going to uh, Olympia, right? Uh, any possible chance anybody else is going to any of the other jumps along the way? I mean, no one says these have to be the only passengers we take. Yeah, I got my I got my role. If you wanna, you wanna tell me how you wanna try to find that out. Um, I wanna carouse with the passengers or carouse with the people. Awesome. Just kind of see if there's anybody else going. Anybody else going my way? Give me the carouse. If we can get like a nice friendly poker game together with the passengers. All right, Tommy. A lot of people recognize you. They start cheering for you as you're going through the crowds here. Uh, unfortunately, there is nobody going in that direction. All right, all right. That are you know that that are waiting. Autographs oh, later. Right. All right, well, I guess head to uh, the four that I need to be talking to. And uh, I have whoever looks like the person in charge and introduce myself. That's greetings. I understand that you guys may have some room for us aboard your fine ship. Uh, that is definitely correct, sir. Um, we could offer you... Uh, board and passage it would just be a uh small uh, couple of things to negotiate here um would you be supplying your own food or would you like us to uh supply some fresh gourmet meals every single day the uh he turns his head and confers with the other uh three that are with them and uh, you hear under their breaths they're tired of, of eating the cold rations they got says well how much is it for the for the gourmet um, for the entire trip, all the way there, it's going to be 3500 per person. You hear him, uh, you know, sucking air through his teeth, like, that's a little high. Can you do any better than that? This is where I'm going to get the broker checked. Yeah, I don't think I could pay for that. What is it without the hot meals? Without the good meals, we could go down to three per. Three thousand per. He confers with the his associates and says, "Okay, yeah, we, we'll do it for three thousand." Excellent, excellent. Um, Give him the details of our shift, where we're berthed, where we're going to take off, how much, how long he's got to get any extra supplies that he needs, and 
and then head back he, to the ship. He asks, "Is it okay if they set up their field tents in the, in the lower deck?" By all means. Okay, so they will have comfortable living down there. All right, Kelvin. I think like uh. I think negotiation number one went pretty well. How about you? you did a great job there, Tom. I'm a natural. They were probably did not know what to say. I just need to turn you up a little bit. Is there anything else you guys want to do here go. in Highport? Oh, yeah. possible stand. Oh, I think I got two at the same time. Go ahead, Calvin. I was just going to say, are we going to try to get any try to Get any goods or do we not? I know I have you. I got two. Uh, but if we can haul something, it may be worthwhile, even if we have to haul it all the way to the end. I totally agree if I knew how that worked better. Yeah, no, right. There is one other method. I'll, I'm going to do that. Um, let me roll on something real quick. So you have the uh, where you guys can negotiate your trade, but then and then there's the other method where they just uh, it's like a flat rate shipping. Someone just pays you to try to send something somewhere. You know what I mean? Oh, there you go. Yeah. You go. Oh yeah. yeah. There we go. Hey, anybody? We're going to Enos. Anybody needs to take anything? Yeah, I forget what that term is. I don't want to spend too much time looking it up. All right. There is a... Uh, a flat rate basic equipment and electronics to steal and they'll just pay you 5000 Oh hell yeah Oh 5500 5250 it is Sounds good be you and Mr. Gorman are drinking good tonight. So let me get this straight. I got, I got three thousand times four for heads. Skeggins right? is on duty. Or is it twenty five hundred? What did we negotiate with those guys? Three. Three. Was three. Okay. Fifty. And then are you guys black boxing it with the scout courier? That gets paid oh, yeah, we ain't doing nothing illegal. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yep, sounds cool good. To hack uh, that black box at some point in case we do later on down the line. Want to take up something more illegal? Yeah, be careful hacking that. There aren't just consequences of not getting paid because you're under contract with the third Imperium as well. Uh, that, that'll put you guys at, on a. Uh, uh, more of an outlaw status. Uh, so we'd have to probably just put on a here. list. Well, that'll work once we get the lab up and running, right? Ship and the less than legal ship. I'm looking at at the end of this trip. Making approximately twenty thousand two hundred fifty credits, uh, but then minus expenses for fuel, and then minus the, uh, the ship maintenance costs. I 
calculating that up right now uh, before we start our trip. Break, break, break. You have an incoming message from Icarus Blue Sun. Will you accept the charges? Yeah. No, that guy's a dick. That is Marine from Crew. Hey guys, man. Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I had to ditch like that, but uh, I got a lead on this asshole research assistant I had stole my shit. Um, sorry, I snatched up that uh, shit. But uh, when you guys get where you're going, send me coordinates so I can meet back up. Blue sun out. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Yeah, we'll make him uh, live on the quarter deck for that one. All right, gents, y'all have a good game. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Definitely you too. Take care, brother. So looking at making about twenty-two thousand on this haul. All right, guys. Anything else before you guys take off into space? I don't think so. Anybody else got anything? I think we're about all stocked up. Sure, we need. Oh, but I don't. We gotta make a little money first. Need more booze. I can, I can keep it over here. I'm gonna go drop. I don't know how much. Like, like, what's a good amount of money to drop on booze? I don't have a great cost yet in this game for stuff. I'm going to go drop like 200 credits on booze. We need more booze. Meanwhile, playing with these. so much. We got to figure out how to use the thing. You know, to find a quick reference for standard items. But we'll, we'll get a account for that later, but we'll say you guys stock up on the booze. Yeah, boom, I just took off 200 for booze. If that's not a good price, I'll add it up later. Tommy ain't no cheapskate when it comes to that. All right, guys, so I am doing a uh, by the numbers and the with the rule book on how to jump. Let me get us out in space. Change the audio. All right, so jump drive is maintained. You are using unrefined fuel, so that's a DM minus two. Uh, that's what that is. Yeah, that's how I figured it out now. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay, so. I need the, who is our astrogation? That's uh, me, well, Scott Gorman. He's got a level two astrogation, unless someone else wants to do it. Do you All you, Mr. Gorman. You're taking the seat in the astrogation seat. Okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about, there is a 1d4 plus 10 minutes uh, because time doesn't matter. I'm not going to roll for that. So I have an easy check for you to plug in your astrogation. Uh, but it is a DM minus two for unrefined. So fours, then you just hit your band. Next to your band, you're going to do minus two. See, I see somebody changing my numbers. I did. All right, sorry. I think I mentioned to Josh. See how uh, 
but those test difficulties changed. I didn't make those changes. That that two and four, which is supposed to be a four, or it's supposed to be a four. It just uh, I I was pretty certain I had them set properly last session, but I thought I was under the impression maybe they were getting changed by somebody. Okay, so but yeah, you have test difficulties four. You do have a minus two due to the fuel you have. Um, and then, is that incorporated, or do I need to incorporate it in? No, you're going to incorporate it in, because I just want to follow this kind of flow chart and how this works. Okay, so I'll put the minus two in as a modifier. Yeah. And then you Where's our first it. jump to? It is Enos. Okay. Sky is going to roll right now. Ooh. All right, so that's our astrogation is good. Um, our engineers need to divert all power to the jump. Yeah, they're drinking some whiskey. But you guys are uh, doing your engineering thing. So Got you the, a good bottle, buddy. The jump is modified by the astrogation, uh, but a, he only exceeded it by one, so it's a plus zero. Uh, so my engineer to uh, charge the jump. It's an easy four up. Should already be set. Uh, also using unrefined fuel is a DM minus two. So who's our engineer? What do you roll for that guy? Is it an engineering skill? Yeah, engineering skill check. Yeah, it is engineering skill check. I hate to say this, I, I unless someone has it, I'm pretty sure it was me last time. Yeah, I don't have it. I had the. I think I flew us last time. I did the pilot, but yeah, I only have uh, astro astrogation and piloting. Trying to change train on engineering, but don't have that yet. I had all kinds of hopes and dreams, but basically just learned how to run my mouth and talk to people in bars. <clears throat> I just I just re looked at the task chain chart. Uh, one to five is a plus one, so it's only be a minus one on this. Whoever our engineer is, it's gonna be a minus one. Yeah, because it's minus two for the unrefined fuel, but a plus one for uh, our astrogation. This is a chain task for making a jump. Okay, I'm going to make a basic roll with a minus one, because that's what my jack of all trades is. Okay. Nine. Your jacket of all trades is minus one, right? Uh, yo, I'm assuming it's intelligence, yeah. and then I have a minus two to it. My intelligence gives me a plus one. The jack, uh, jack of all trades, untrained skills, a minus two, so it gives me an overall minus one. Yeah. So then, and then what I was gonna say, then the uh, then it would have been another minus one. Yep, I should have took yeah. a minus two to it. Yeah, that's fine. We got it. You, it was a Eight. pass either way. No set up for. All right, you guys make your first jump to Enos. Uh, burning through twenty tons of jump fuel. Uh, in order to dock and refuel, the station says they're going to need a uh, fifty credit docking fee. I'll cover that with my minimum wage earnings. All right, and then I'm going to need I have two part of us covered. Yeah, I need a pilot check to dock. This is not a chain event. This is just a straight up uh, ship piloting. We're, and we're in the small ship, right, that we flew last time. So I've got a I've got a one for spacecraft. I don't know if anybody's better. Um, yeah, same here. So it doesn't matter how, like, 
and we can do it, that's fine. Looks like Gordon was drunk anyway, so. Rolling. With these. All right, and then if you're just there for the three fuel, you guys will take off again. Uh, we're going to redo the jump thing, uh, I think, two more times, right? Yep. Uh, which what location is next? So next is uh, three more times. Next is Khaled Bogue. Go on everything. The task difficulty remains the same. So first, I need the astrogation, minus two. How much is it for refined fuel? Let's see. Wait, this one refiner fuel, right? Or we would have to wait here, though, right? To yeah. Refine. So this place, yeah, no, yeah. This starport actually had refined fuel at five hundred credits a ton. So that's five times what we've already calculated. Yo, oh, never mind. That'd be ten thousand credits. Uh, but does this ship have like a refinement or? Uh... Uh, no, yeah, that's what, now that I've looked into the other ships, this one does not. I, I assumed it did based on the way the last story was written, but no, it is unrefined fuel that was fueled up in here, and it's a minus two to jump. Okay, so I gotta roll another astrogation at minus two, right? Yep. Okay, it's asked to four minus two. The plot is set. I just need my engineer to engage the jump engines. All right. Do I get any plus or minuses from his roll? So he exceeded it by three. Let me check my dandy chart. I need like a DM screen on my computer desk. There's just so many references. So at a one to five, it still stays at plus one. Yeah. Okay. Caleb Bog. Caldebog. Caldebog. I just need someone to dock this thing. Again, uh, docking is going to be 50. Where's the last place we're going to end up going? Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Next jump. Yep, we got one guy got you safe on. Uh, we're going to refuel with regular unrefined or refined fuel. Unless they're having like a sale on refined fuel, I think we're going to go with unrefined. Yeah. What's the difference between that and regular? So the unrefined. The minus two. Yeah, that's causing the minus two on the, the checks. Oh, I thought you said they had refined, regular, and unrefined. Cost, right. So it's five times more expensive for the refined. It was 500 per ton. Yeah, our unrefined gives us a minus two starting out on our chain of checks. Yeah, I know that. I was just asking about price. Zero. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, we're, probably, we're probably going to have to get like that uh, free trader at some point. So as we stop at each of these places, should we see if anybody else needs a ride to Olympia? See if we can sell out some of this. Do we have... Oh, we're on that small ship. We're pretty much out of bunk space, aren't we? Yeah, these guys are just really. We, yeah, we put them all in cargo. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, technically, we have more. But we also got some cargo, too, so I'm assuming some of that's taken up. Yeah, I did. I did forget to mention how many that would take up. I would say most hey, of Yeah, I forgot. Them. I was, I've been looking at that big ship plan. I got that in my head. Sorry. I guess I believe the next stop is steel. 
whenever we're ready. Okay, so let me put the minus two in. Okay, so you yeah add, add a plus two now to the, the jump drive. So Tommy, you'll get a plus two on your on this this roll, so it should actually just break even. But oh, my jack of all trades is, is overall minus one, so that's actually still plus still. one base roll. Yep, minus two for the fuel. Sorry. Oh, okay. So, still. So. I mean, difficulty still stays at a four, though. Whoop. See, that's what you guys get for letting somebody untrained do this shit. Wow. Okay. You guys still got that, that map up? So you guys were shooting for the system of steel. Uh, something goes horribly wrong with your guys' jump engines, right? And here, it starts doing distress signals. So your ship, the high and dry, actually comes out in the mithril system. Okay, that didn't seem too bad. Oh, the engineer. It's it's totally. I don't know how this happens. I even have a map of Mithril. It's bizarre. Oh, so the the engines failed. Yeah, the engine went kaput on you. He got a hard failure. The engines are uh, they're pretty much roached right you now. Have one job. One job, Marine. A, I'm not a Marine. I'm a rock star. B. I told you all I totally shouldn't be doing this. All right, so system scanners show that there is a spaceport, but it's on surface. That just sounds like an opportunity, okay. I think. Does it work well yes. enough to take us there? Well, that's what I'm going to be start doing now. Are we got to see if we're crash landing this thing. Well, I could try and use a mechanics check to at least get us down to the surface. Okay, so what I'll do is it'll be a mechanics check. If you pass it, then I won't chain the, the negative one to the piloting check. So it should be a root. Well, this is kind of, I'm going to make this an average check. Um, you just, I mean, Tommy just blew some complicated piece of gear out of the space, but. So go ahead and make your, yep, still got it. All right, so we're going to have a normal pilot check to land this on surface. Engines aren't repaired. They're just, you know, duct tape well enough to get you guys down. Uh, it wouldn't matter. You need to refuel as well. This will be where you're going to do it. Damn it. Oh, yeah. Well, come on, boy. I'm imagining like a Looney Tunes with that Martian guys like crash landing on some shit. With all five of you guys on board. Well, maybe now we do need a bigger ship. Maybe right. an engineer. Yeah, so uh, while you guys are spiraling, not so out of control, but it's right. uh, yeah, Calvin's having a hard time with it. Uh, more sensor readings are coming up. This is a ice planet. Uh, there is population, I believe, is really small. I'm actually going to look at the Mithril wiki. It tells us. So... It is, oh wow, it's technically rated as unpopulated, but there is a spaceport here. 
Ah, technology. Sounds like, sounds like home quarters for a, a pirating <laughs> operation. Yeah, this has tech level as zero, which means Stone Age. There are no long tech level prohibitions. Yeah, guys, this is our Caribbean. <clears throat> All right. I want to do a couple more rolls to see how much more damage we take to the ship other than the jump drive. So that's not bad. All right, I'm so totally in the back of the ship with like a plastic bottle of booze just going rock and roll as we're going down. All right. So Calvin is able to make the landing, but it's not it's not flawless. You guys do uh, impact the landing gears into the, 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 the structure of the ship. So now you're going to have to do a uh, like a sonogram of the ship to see if there's any structural damage as well. Gagan, I think you were better at the crash landing thing. What was that? So, is this the same ship that Skagen had to crash land on the volcano that we picked up? Yeah, it happens to be that same ship. It happens. It's just not doing so good. I don't know what you're talking about. We're in one piece. Nailed it. What? This is actually where the the written adventure starts, guys. We are halfway, so you guys want to take 10? Sure. Yep. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't have been any better that this is where the, uh, the field jump happened. Well, there was going to be an environmental effect to hook it in, but by the way, we're good. Story, story. This uh, is way better. Story. Yeah, way better. You guys crashed it. Blew the engines out and then crashed it. Well, hard landed. It's totally different. As far as your insurance is concerned. Well, all right, I'm going to be off that set for about five guys. And then I'll put up a boat here in about seven or eight minutes.
Back on. Hey, I just saw a big announcement over at the uh, Fantasy Grounds website. What was that? I guess the Fantasy Grounds has somebody officially running Adventure Leagues now. Like coordinating things, or yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. share the post they made. I Means by. Doug Davidson, the owner of Switeworks. This is the new our new D D Adventure League organizer. It's in chat. Maybe that's something that now I can go back to just DMing again. God. Or playing. Sorry. PC. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to minion my ass. You know her. Uh, yeah, actually, I know of her through the Fantasy Grounds College. She ran the um, Adventure Leagues on Fantasy Grounds at San Diego Comic Con last month. Oh, she was difficult, or she was, um... Uh, she was the organizer. Oh. That, that's, I'm sure that's how Smiteworks reached out to her. Yeah, I'm totally taking a break from Adventure League for a while. Between the seven campaigns or characters that I'm playing and the one that I'm DMing, total full plate. Yeah, I keep eyeing. I wish I had more time to, to do other stuff, but I mean, I'm, I'm almost tapped. The, uh, I'm waiting for this grad school stuff where these projects are due in like four or five weeks now. That's I'm going to have to be shutting down on the weekends like two weeks out. But all right, let me put up a vote and see who's back. Are you not doing the Saturday thing? What's that? I'm not going to do the Saturday Oh, yeah, I'm still going to keep doing the Saturday thing. I just, uh, Matt says just call one weekend off, but it might be Labor Day weekend already. Yeah, I'll look at my schedule. Already, they already sent out emails for the next session registration. Yeah, I gotta retire a couple characters before I can do anything new. The ones we're doing on Monday are about to get retired. Soon. Unless there's something over level 20. No, no. Epic level play. Yeah. 
that's worth sharing. I was going through everything on here that's worth sharing that we haven't already done. All right, so here's more of a, uh, a system map or a system, a world map. So you guys are at half G. Uh, mean temperature at the equator is negative 10 degrees Celsius. I can already tell you right now, unless you guys bought cold weather gear, and there's no way to, to have planned this ahead of time, that your exposure is going to be a problem. Um, I'm almost positive Tommy has cold weather gear. Okay. Um, Scott Gorman has the uh, epidermal symbiote, so he can take temperatures from negative 30 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. All right, so I got to give a little bit of background of, of Mithril because you guys have had time to check your your shipboard wiki and the uh, you know the actually passengers that you have on board will be able to tell you a little bit more. So this this outpost is a uh, home to a Sword Worlder outpost. Um, sword Worlds, you know, they're kind of their own thing within the the Third Imperium. Um, you see a lot of their planets are named after, uh, like, metals. Um, sword rollers are, are not openly hostile to outsiders, um, but they do give sword rollers preferential treatment. You shouldn't have any problem uh, getting refueled. Um, based on what you see at this port, though, you may have a problem getting the parts you need to get, get your ship back off the ground. Uh, first things first is getting somebody to take a look at the J drive and then somebody to take a look at the uh, hard landing you just had to make sure there was no internal structural damage. There is very little trade here. Uh, the outpost, outpost consists of an administration building, a reactor shed, uh, accommodations block and a vehicle garage. I'll have a map for you here in a second. This is a non-military base, but you could expect sword worlders and an outpost like this to be armed. Uh, there is one other ship here. Um, it looks like it's been here for a while. It is a uh, heavy, heavy coating of uh, snow on it. What struck you as odd as you were landing, there was no transponder and nobody talking you into landing there. Uh, Kelvin, usually you got voice comms with somebody directing you in, asking you about your business, etc. Comms are quiet your whole way in. Yeah. So here's what I think, Daniel. We scoped this place out. They've got a landing place. This is our. This is a good spot for our home base when we start running our our undercover missions. <clears throat> oh, I agree. Every pirate has to have a home. So, but we did land near or at some, uh, uh, something like a port, right? Yeah, it's designated as a Class C port, which is pretty... Um, a yeah, nice port. Yeah. Pulling up the map now, and then I gotta flip back to where we're at on the story. 
So one thing I'm not clear on is when we were on that other planet, somebody gave me this off temperature epidural thing. Is that good? Does that have a limited lifetime or is it good still? Have to look at it. You have the item easily available in the link in chat. Yep, personal augmentation is permanent. Sweet. So that should be okay. All right, so you guys, uh, on the, you're on the landing pad here at number one. Like I said, there's only one other ship here. Uh, it snowed recently. There are no tracks here on the airfield, and there's nobody coming out to greet you. The other ship here looks like it's been here for a while as it's covered in snow. What I think I'm going to do and try something because I'm learning as I go. So I'll put down a, a map or a grid. I'll see if I could put it high and dry in there. Don't know how I feel about hexes, but traveler. That's funny. I'd like to know your thoughts there, because I've always thought hexes were a great idea. I know it makes movement easier. Uh, but here's the, I think my problem is more with the way fantasy grounds those hexes. So at the 12 o'clock position on this hex, it's flat. Where Traveler uses the 12, 12 o'clock position as the pointy end. So they're off 45 degrees or so, I guess. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. So I can't overlay any hexes and fantasy grounds over any hex map provided to me. That's funny. Yeah, I see. I see now. Yeah, it's not that I don't like them, it's just the the compatibility issue, which I'm going to mention actually in a forum post, because I was trying to get some maps the other day when I was converting this, and it was driving me crazy. I would have to check, but I think that can that's actually switchable in... Uh... Yeah, let me let me know if you can figure that out. But yeah. So I, I don't know where we are yet, but maybe since nobody else has come and come out so far, we take a look to see if we can see anything on board that other ship that may be useful. Our black we're, box just knows we landed, right? It doesn't know what we're doing outside of it. No, nope, yeah, it's the uh, big brother doesn't go outside the ship except whatever the sensors pick up. Where is the other ship at? Is it just like right next to us? Yeah, I give, uh, I'll drop another one. It's going to be the same token, essentially. It'll be that one. Alright. Yeah, I'll go with Calvin to check it out. I'm a mechanic. I can go pull parts off of it. Or if it's better, we can... Maybe possibly take this one. So, so for whoever whoever needs to stay in the ship, you don't have to worry about. It. Just make sure your token's touching our ship. How's the uh, atmosphere here? Breathable. I mean, cold, but breathable. Yeah, it's actually listed as standard. So yeah, the answer is yes, breathable. It's like that, that standard is Earth standard. This place is like totally deserted then, right? Yeah, right now that's way that's what you sense. I mean, there's usually. You, you you you'd land in a, a a port like this. There would be a vehicles coming out. Uh, usually a vehicle to come pick up all the goods and bring you guys back into the port. Proper uh, vehicles to come out for the refuel, all that stuff. It's 
see if they got those buildings to see if there's any equipment in them. Scott's going. Looks like he's going to six right now. Yeah, he's going to take a quick peek, quick peek in there. Yeah, so Calvin's going to, I don't know what I, maybe a recon on the the ice snow covered ship. See if we can figure out, A, if there's anything dangerous around it. B, can we get in? All right, so first, I got some first impressions I should read to you. So, okay, so you already, already says, but there are no footprints or signs of vehicle starships except for this one or any other form of traffic to and from the port installation, but it has snowed recently, which would cover any tracks. Nobody is moving in port, and you do not seem to be under attack. Uh, your damage to your ship is repairable if you have the spare parts. Otherwise, you're going to have to ask the port to fix this or wait for another another ship to come through with parts, whether you order them or not. Now I'm getting to you. So, Scott Gorman, weapons drawn? Yeah, just in case. He's just going to take a peek in, and if there's something there, kind of like sprint away. All right, so this is a thick walled and blocky building. Uh, there is a small vestibule intended to reduce heat loss and provide somewhere to leave outdoor clothing. Beyond the entryway, the building contains. You, are you poking your head in? Yeah. All right, inside the entryway, the building contains four offices, two of which look like they have rarely ever been used a communication suite, an administrative center with far too many desks for such a small installation, and two secure storage areas. Okay. <clears throat> um, gonna let everyone know I'm gonna check the offices in this building. And then just go in. Just have a look around. Yep. All right. So these offices, there are a couple of desks that look like they use normally have normal use, uh, but are currently unoccupied. And nothing of like no no papers, no computers or anything like that. No, the computer terminal. Sorry. Yeah. So the ones that are, look like they're used that are computer terminals. We uh, access them, or there's no power. Nope. There is power. There are power, the power is on in these buildings. But it looks like the computers have, uh, have all rebooted and are waiting logins. Can I use my electronics computer skill to try and uh, access them? You can, and this gives me the... the difficulty of very difficult and it's going to take 2d times 10. it's going to take you about an hour to see if you could hack them okay um, if that's what you want to pursue then i'll need that check and then once you start that i'll see what the other guys are doing okay i'm going to yell to the guys i'm going to try to access this computer so they know what i'm doing and then i'm going to go back in and i guess try to access it you could just use the radios Oh, that's right, you guys got radios. All right, Captain Gorman's hacking computers. I'll tell him when he has here in a little bit. He needs an hour to do so.
Yeah, so Calvin wants to look around the ship, make sure nothing's booby trapped, and then kind of act like, hey, uh, anybody around? Need a little help out here? Just to see if anybody's nearby, hears us. Now, could I use my mechanical skill to kind of look at it and check it as I'm walking around it with Calvin to maybe guess how long it's been sitting here? Maybe I could look at it and tell, like, the, it hasn't been serviced in a really long time or something. You know what yes. I'm saying? Yeah, so Kelvin, I'll take a recon check from you. Let me set it back to average. And then after that, then we'll chain it. And then we'll, we'll give you the mechanic. Okay. I see nothing. Yep. I know nothing. And then go ahead at a minus one then, uh, Danielle. Okay, so this actually, this ship looks like from the exterior that there's nothing wrong with it. And just uh, the recon would have told us how long it's been here. Okay. Well, Kelvin, the ship definitely looks intact on the outside. Let's go see what it looks like on the inside. Let's do. So, uh... You know how to I get in this thing? I act like we're, hey, anybody around, see if anybody's there. And if if not, see, yeah, see if we can find a, a way to get in. So the, the the single entrance it has here on the ramp is, so there's going to be two entrances to it, this, this ship. You have a regular surface entrance, you know, where the ramp comes down. And then you actually have the, um, uh, like on the, the top of it, I guess it would be on the bottom on this one because the top one has the turret. So the bottom is actually where it would dock in space to a space station, you know, using a like an umbilical cord type thing. So the the regular so surface docking requires an access entry that uses uh, biometrics eye and thumbprint. That's the that's the entrance on the belly yeah that's for our normal ramp entrance you know through the door when we see that i'm going to message scott and tell him watch for somebody who looks important and possibly dead we might need their eye and finger Go dead. and then you guys have enough working knowledge of spaceships that you know that the 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 orbital entrance can only be accessed from the inside of the ship uh, for obvious reasons. Well, can I man. attempt to make an electronics to pot? You just want to go search the city, see if we can find a body, or you want to try and break into it? I'm willing to break in. I have not a lot of skills in that type of thing. I'm I got electronic social engineer. Well, I figured, you know, I'm I, I'm a mechanic. I've got some electronics. I, I should pretty much know my way around a decent ship. So yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay, give me your electronics. The difficulty is set. Ooh. Okay. Yep, we're not doing that. I can't even get that regular. <laughs> uh, you know, on second thought, I these ships normally have really, really loud alarms or really, really deadly don't fuck with me. So I'm not going to mess with this right now. Let's go see if we can find a body. Or the owner, I guess we should keep looking for an owner and not a body. So maybe we go check that, uh, the bunkhouse? Yeah, we can head up there with Scott so that way he's not by himself. You know, he's probably drunk anyway and stumbling over shit. Is it so icy or snowy that it's hampering movement? No, I actually made a uh, roll on the, on a chart that it is just simply cold 
no weather conditions. We could stick and our head. You were going to ride cool. something, weren't you? Well, I was debating on whether I wore the ice gear or whether I wore the snowshoes or whether I could actually take out my skis. I'm sure you could ski uh, off of the pad there. Dude, 100 credits if you jump on top of the ship, ski down, do a backflip, land. <laughs> How much if I can't do the backflip? Oh, we might pay extra. It you give me your hair dryer. No go. No. Nah. Hair dryer is out of the question. <laughs> That's right, mine's better. I laugh at you, sir. Alright, well, let's go check on Scott. He's been down there for a long time. We haven't heard from him, and he hasn't even 2 8 us yet, so. Hey, Cap. That's not me. The ship moved. I made a bond. <laughs> well, I'm just going to throw this out there. Like, parts off that ship are free if there's nobody here, right? Right. Oh, yeah. That, that, yeah. I was going to go in there and use my mechanic skill and piece it down. Some of it might be an upgrade for us, and we can turn around and sell other shit that don't work for us at all. All right, do we find Scott? Yeah, you find Scott lurking over a computer looking real nerdy. That's why he got kicked out of the military, you guys. Look at what he's looking at. Ain't allowed to watch that on government computers. All right, Reeves. Settle down. Kathy's busy at work here. Trying to get information. Oh, he's busy working it, we can tell. Yeah, so I guess we'll get the hour. So um the last visit the what what the computer records is pretty sparse. It's just um in, incoming and outgoing space traffic, which isn't very often. Uh, shipping records, and then the last visitor is is what you're looking at right now. It was a far trader, uh, Eureka Wasab. I'm going to put the name in. Does that match the name of the ship that's sitting out there right now? Uh, they didn't they didn't paint the hull name on there, or the name on the hull. That was the name of the person? No custom paint job? That's just wrong. No, I guess that is the name. It says the last visitor to the port was the far trader e e uh, Taka Wasab, so that should be a person. Then before that was a subsidized merchant by the name of Jinfrey. And then three weeks before that was a Sword World vessel that had a designation of Supply Run 4 Tech 14. That's all they logged it as. Yep, it's got in that airlock for 0G. That was what I was describing on the bottom, but that the, you could only access from the inside. And you, yeah, you nailed the term I was trying to. I, was kept, I said umbilical cord, but yeah, the airlock. Um, as you start scrolling through through the uh, with your mouse, you see that Jinfree makes semi-regular runs from Zabon to Kaldabog by way of the Reserve Worlds. Oh yeah, or, or someone just, yeah, just spacing the shit out of you guys. Uh, but what is noted from 
Jen Freeze Logs is on the last visit somebody got off and didn't and did not board, which is, was unusual. And that is all the that is all the records you've received off that computer. Okay, yeah, so this guy's gonna let everyone know what he found. Um, and there's nothing, no name for the person that got off, but didn't get bored again. Nope, this spaceport does not care to keep the records, just the uh, the ship captains. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a look through number five, reactor shed. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Number five is the reactor shed. Okay, this is a very solid building with thick walls and no windows. It has a single entrance and a heavy door, which is closed. Try to open it. Is it locked? Or... Can I use my Geiger counter around the building before he tries to open it? Oh, yeah, come on. Not outside the building? No. Well, I guess, yeah, I wouldn't get anything outside, but if it was, then you would definitely know not to go in at all. Do it. Well, we can open up a little bit. You can test if it, any, any radiation's coming out. If it is, we can just close it right up. Yeah, does, anybody yeah. th does anybody think their PC might understand how this works? Uh, a localized reactor on an on a outpost like this, that they might your characters might be able to shed light on how it operates. I, I mean, the way I've worked on ships, I fucked up and didn't take engineering one goddamn time. But yeah, I only have uh, electronics and. Uh... Yep, yeah, we've all learned Tommy doesn't have engineering. I've got like basic science, but no ones. They're still just zero. Well, let's come back to that. I'll check number seven. Okay. The accommodation block. Okay. When I see that again. All right, so the accommodation block, as you walk up, you see that there is a laser burn on the door. Like uh, okay, well, somebody shot at it, or? Like a laser burn. Definitely laser impact. At the door or out the door? Are there any windows into the door? Nope. I guess you should say any windows at all on the whole building. Yeah, Scott Gorman's going to give like hand signs, like going to open the door a little bit and just give him like hand signs to like direct people to like I guess get ready in case there is something hostile inside. Can it take opens the door a little bit or if he can't open the door is it locked? Well, the door is opening and it leads into a entrance vestibule. So what they use this this area for is is uh you know getting Dining and taking off the uh, cold weather gear. Check out the food. How long has it looked like since someone's been in here? All right, so we're going to go into the main chamber. So 
So here in the main chamber, it actually looks like there was a brief and vicious gunfight. There are numerous bullet holes in the furniture, and chips out of the walls indicate that well over 100 rounds were fired. Most casings have been cleared up, though. Uh, but you do see a few laying around. Now you can see that the central dining table was overturned as a barricade, and it was riddled with bullets. And... And there is a large stain behind it. Large stain? Large stain. Can I tell what type of stain it is? or? Yeah, how are you going to determine that? Um, I have medic to determine if it's blood. Does that work? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to set this. Okay, set the routine. All right, while the the blood is consistent and, and and you know visually and you know kind of tap your finger in it when you smell it it smells like chemical like maybe they poured ammonia over it whoever did this okay it looks like there is blood but it looks like somebody poured like some sort of ammonia over the chemical over the blood does it look like they tried to clean up the place or is it still or is there any like ammonia on any of the uh, surrounding furniture? You ever seen Boondock Saints? Age check. <laughs> yeah, I usually they do that to it. It kills the uh, uh, blood sample from identifying who it belonged to. Yep, that's it. You can still get a test saying it's blood, you just can't... You won't be able to can't read it. You get, like, DNA from it. Yeah, you took it to a lab, but wouldn't tell you anything. Not even this far in the future. God! Alright, so this is the main chamber. Oh. There are, uh, there is a kitchen. Um, they configure, configure it configurable chamber jesus greg uh that that multi-purpose is a lounge and gym they can put up the gym and then it kind of collapses away into the walls and then there's a bunch of accommodation rooms here still in this we're still in the accommodation block and skagen would you want to you want to radio in they tell the guys what you found i found the garbage pit yeah. Interesting in it? Like bodies? That's what I was going to ask. Anything that I shouldn't asked. be in the garbage pit? I don't know. I'm looking. All right. Uh, you will have to go down to determine that. The, the smell of refuse is a little overwhelming, even in this cold temperature. So obviously the uh, the like the decom whatever is decomposing in there creates heat, right? Uh, that is coming up. It's big steam steam pile. I uh, put on my rebreather, dry some some of that that uh, the futons in the ground if I can. That climbing gear we had from our last foray. I can make my way down there, I guess. Oh man, Skaggins, you the man. You get like a bonus for this. Checking one thing. I don't. Give me the. We'll take a athletics strength. I do have my DC set. Easy day. So you're able to get down there without impaling yourself on the junk metal and, and trash. Uh, but uh, you think you found a burned body, maybe more. Okay. Uh, might have some answers here, guys. Check that vehicle base. See if there's any vehicles in there so we can haul some of this stuff up out of here. 
got it, boss. Calvin's kind of sitting nearby. He'll kind of uh, crack open the door to to building four, see what he sees. There's nothing else in seven. Give me one second. Well, no, there there is more. You still got the kitchens to check and the accommodations. Yeah. We'll go with this with the radio in. Sorry, the uh, Chelmo's going ham on me. It's freezing me up. All right, so the vehicle garage is a windowless brick-shaped structure with a large access door in the front and smaller personnel entrances on the side. Uh, doors are shut. No sign of conflict here, though. So if I walk around to the side, whichever side it is, kind of crack open one of those doors and peek inside, hey, anybody around? Yeah, so as soon as you crack open the door, there is a motion sensor that engages the lights. You can tell that there is a heating system kept on low to keep the engine blocks from freezing from the ATV that's in here. Hey, yeah, Skag, it looks like I got something in here. I'll see if I can get it running. This is a uh, ATV specific to this adventure. So I have an image to share of it. The, the stat line is normal. But that is what it looks like. And I don't know if Como got it. Let me know when you get in Como. I'll, I'll share it with you. The ship. All right, now let's get back to the captain. What were you going to check next in that building, in the accommodation building? Yeah, I'm just going to check it room by room. So starting with the kitchen will be nearest you. Uh, it's well equipped with gadgets and can turn out meals for well over 20 people at once. Large stocks of food remain. Uh, there is a cold storage system for the perishables. Uh, there is one cabinet that has obviously been ransacked. Anything we can, anything that's salvageable, or is that kind of just like, uh... oh, yeah, this food for 20, uh, 20 people. This is there's enough here for a month, so this was for you guys, is almost half a year, okay? So I just let everyone know, guys, uh, get a ton of rations and food here that we can take with us. Cool. I'll flip it to somebody else who hasn't gone recently. Let's go with uh, Tommy. What are you up to? Oh, Tommy's following Kelvin. I got his back if he's looking in. What um? What do you guys do with your passengers? Locked them in the cargo hold. Told them there was issues. We'll be right back. But they have no idea that there was a struggle here, right? No, they're they're in the cargo hold, assuming we're outside making repairs to the ship. Music again. All 
All right, so time is falling along. Uh, Skagen, you're taking that body with you? Oh, taking that bad boy with you. Sorry, misread that. What are you going to be doing, Skagen? I'll see if I can get them to bring the vehicle over there, and if it has a winch, so we'll use that. If not, we'll just back and forth, and I'll tie that rope on the, the bodies as we go, and I'll be looking for anything that out of place down here, like weapons or gear or anything like that. That's not general refuse. Okay. Radio that in. All right, let's go back to the captain. We still have the accommodation room. Uh, they're small and basic. Uh, they're probably inferior uh, to those aboard a second-rate commercial starship, so these guys are put, living pretty Spartan. You can tell some are used as junk rooms, or others are uh, obviously occupied. There is a room with basic medical supplies. Oh, where I'm at, or...? Yeah, you're, we're back with you, man. So the accommodation rooms in that building. Yeah, what what type of medical supplies? Like a trauma pack or a first aid kit? No, basic first aid kit for minor emergencies. A TL five one. No. Nope. A TL two. Yeah, it's it's low. It's, it's me. Okay, I guess I'll take uh, whatever medical kits there are. Yeah, actually, the, the sum of all of it actually makes a field medical kit. It's just kind of interspersed. I'm going to put it in the party sheet. with us okay um so that's all there is in uh, building seven or nope that is it Already described the workout general purpose room it is what that is. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I missed the description. As you're walking out, you see a blood trail leading, uh, getting dragged out a door on the south side of the building. Okay. I'm gonna follow it and see what I can find. I don't even know this blood trail here. Right. So you step out of this, you uh, you could kind of see that there's no new snowfall that has covered this up. But if you kind of move your boots through it, you will get a collection of pinkish red uh, snow cone effect. Uh, it, uh, it does stop here. You do see somebody throwing shit around in a pit at the end of the airfield. That, that would be skagging, though, right? So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm gonna like uh, move more of the snow away to see if I can see anything else. All right, give me a recon check. Yeah, I don't have recon. That's uh, minus four then on uh, on skill. Minus four, minus three. You may just add another minus one to it. One second. If it's minus three, unskilled is minus three. Yep, sorry. I just, I misspoke. Minus three, unskilled. Yeah. 
No, you don't figure out anything outside of where that the blood trail ended. Okay. I'll just let everyone know that there's a blood trail here. Um, if anyone else wants to check it out, they can. If someone wants to check it out, I kind of think this is best if we uh, hook up to the refueling station and start the refuel process and start to get to work on stripping that other ship. This just doesn't seem like the place that we should be hanging out. For we got to get into the other ship. Absolutely have to. Yeah, getting into that other ship may be fun. I, I kind of have I mean, a feeling that the other ship's key might be down here, but... I, I might be wrong about that. It's the eyeball. I'm hoping that. I thought we had a blowtorch. Or a cutting torch. Is it uh, daylight out? Or is it nighttime? It's daytime. Did we, uh... <clears throat> can I try to crank that ATV and I'll, I'll go see if I can help Skagen with the... Yeah, see if it turns over. So the ATV does turn over. No skill check required for that. All right, hey, Tommy, just... want to go for a ride? Hell yeah. We never checked the reactor room. Reactor shed. We did not. And so far, we're alive. If you guys want to go help, check in real quick. We'll check the reactor room. Yeah, we'll drive this vehicle down and see what we can see what we can do. Okay, so this guy's gonna open the door a little bit while I check with the Geiger counter to see if there's any radiation. Guns drawn. If there is, he's gonna close it right quick. Yeah, there is not. Okay. I'm gonna open the door a little bit to see what I can see inside. I'm still good remain outside. Yeah, so you walk in. Uh, there are distress signals going off uh, by the computers in there. Um, there are readouts that won't require you to hack in anything. And you do, now that you're on the inside of it, uh, you feel a breeze. You know, you close the door, you still feel a uh, breeze coming through. I feel where the breeze is coming from. Yeah, it's coming from the back wall in the northwest. Okay. And the readouts, does that relate to, like, uh, what does that relate to, like, the reactor or just... The... Yeah, they're, yeah, it's the reactor. What did it say about it? Um, do I need to do, like, a computer check on that or... Uh, I just need you to tell me you're going to read it and I'll tell you what it is. Yeah, I'll read it, yeah. Yeah, so the um, the reactor says that the uh, the system readout says that the reactor has rebooted after the uh, the outage. Uh, and you scrolling up, it seemed to be a non mechanical outage. The system diagnostic doesn't did not identify what caused it. That's all it says. So for at least for some time, this was what this outpost was without power. Okay. If somebody turned it off. Okay, gonna check where the breeze came, where the uh, breeze is coming from. All right. So the uh, once you get through the reactor, there's a on the other side there. There is a large hole in the northwest part of the wall that has been blasted open by a large uh, a large laser laser weapon of some kind. Any footprints in or out, or no? They have since been covered. Um, and I wish I just want, I want to say take make a perception roll, but it doesn't work that way. The um, these lasers could only be caused by a. It's larger than some that be personally carried. It could only be shot by a craft of some kind. Okay. So it looks like something big hit this place. Yeah, and for the guys that are in here, you guys want to give me recon checks? And I got to set my... Okay, task difficulty is set.
Oh, money. This tells you everything. All right, so Danielle, you piece this together. It looks like the back wall of this was shot open by the turret of the ship here on the airfield. Uh, as you're walking through sipping on your margarita, you do notice that uh, attached to the, uh, the reactor was a device that had a countdown device on it. Uh, further investigation looked like it was a large magnetic charge that would have created an EMP within the walls. I'm oh, sorry, Martini. So not only was this building attacked with the uh, unknown ship's uh, blaster cannon, well, then, then somebody entered and uh, set off an EMP to cause a uh, baseline power outage. All right. Yeah, I'll let Scott know. Be like, yo, Marine, you see where that cannon's pointed over there on that ship? I bet you if you look directly at it from that hole, you'll be able to put two and two together. I know you can do that math. You, just because you're a Marine doesn't mean you're super dumb. Yeah, I think I can piece that together. Um, I don't need that condescending name and tone of yours, though. My apologies, sir. What I'm just worried about is, is where the guys are that actually shot the ship, or if they're still on board of that, or... Well, if they're still on board and they haven't shot us yet, maybe they don't see us? Yeah, we definitely should just refuel and get out of this place. Salvage what we can, repair the ship, and leave. Before whoever did this comes back. I agree. Okay, so standard airfield procedures requires that somebody sits in a pilot seat running low power while the ship uh, uh, is refueled. Uh, yeah, I'll give you the context for how this, this generator works on Opolis like this. Uh, I guess there's no reason to hide it if you wanted to look it up. You have a um, the reactor is is cycling water underground to keep it cool. It is um, essentially taking H2O and separating it as part of the uh, reaction process, which is creating hydrogen, unrefined hydrogen now, uh, which is getting stored under fuel tanks under the airfield. So where you're at, there will be hookups under the airfield if you hook up the refuel hoses to your ship. Okay. So that separation of the hydrogen and oxygen will top off both life support and uh, fuel. So I'll handle the, nice. the, the jump engine as well as the regular engines? What was that? So the hydrogen's just for the jump engines and life support, right? Or the, uh, the, 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 the oxygen's for life support. It does, the way they describe it, it does get mixed in with the hydrogen to stabilize it. But whatever, I mean, you still need it for your life support as well, so make it one and the same. So the jump engine, so they'll handle life support and the jump engine. Yes. Okay, what about like regular fuel for the regular engines to get, do we have enough? Well, that's it. I mean, that's your hydrogen, the hydrogen powers both the jump engine and the oh. pulse engine. It's really one and the same engine at the end of the day. I say we start fueling everything. Uh, all right, so while that's refueling, we'll go back to Skagen. Skagen, digging through the refuse, you found two more bodies for a total of three burned bodies. I'll go down to you guys. I guess when they get over there with the vehicle, I'll start tying the bodies off one by one, let them pull them up. 
And then pull me up, I guess. I'm going to see if I have a token for this thing. Down there. All right, that's our ATV. Oh, Kelma, did you see the image of the ATV? What it looks like in this specifically? Nope. Oh, Did nice. You... That's a fancy M wrap. Is there a tonnage on that? There is one second. I was gonna link it to the, the chat. I don't know, but it handles great. Skaking had it doing roadies on the way down here. <laughs> can we fit that thing on our ship? It's like ten tons. And yes, you can. Nice. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> It has aquatic drive. <laughs> what are those old duck boats from World War Two? That's what we call them up in Wisconsin anyway, duck boats. Or duck trucks, I forget it. We just finished watching the Pacific again. They, that's what those guys were driving on all those little islands. Uh, yep. Somebody's changing my task difficulties. Let me see something. When I change it, you guys don't get. Are you guys getting in chat the alert that the task difficulty is changing? Or is that just no, I'm not. Right? I can see the number change at the bottom of the screen, but I don't get anything in chat. Okay, so that that's my yeah. cue yeah, as a rough that uh, somebody's making the change. Good to know. I set it back to six. But, uh, that's so just for everybody's awareness, if you change the, uh, the modifier on your end, it is universal. It goes you to change it for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Let's make them simple. All right, we're going to pull all them bodies up and pull up Skeggins. And... Someone's going to have to burn bodies. Yeah, there is nothing else of note. Yeah, we're taking that food with us, right? Not yet. I'm still I'm still waiting for you guys to talk about that. So are you starting the refuel process then? Uh, it's a two man process. I need somebody in a, in, a, in a pilot seat just to monitor and then somebody at the hose to uh, safety, you know, for safety. So the person in the pilot seat, does it have to be like a pilot or just you just need someone physically there to monitor? Preferably somebody APU called, but I guess anybody in this day and age. Calvin can go back. I put her down hard. I'll sit on my ass for the refuel. Don't fall asleep. They don't like it when you do that. And anybody operating the hose? Uh, I'm just going to operate the hose. I'm going to keep a lookout too. Make sure that no one else is uh, approaching. Oh. Let me get it for a side. He was still on my combat tracker. There we go. All right. So, Kelvin, as soon as you, you turn on the uh, the auxiliary power unit, the, uh, you get the normal warnings of the, of the ship, and then plus the uh, the warning klaxons of the uh, the jump drive damage and uh, the hard landing still hasn't been uh, resolved yet. Uh, when all of a sudden, then you start getting a a uh, like a Constant beeping noise. Um, hey, uh, guys, this is a new one. 
Skag, this is your ship, man. It, it's kind of going crazy on me. Um, would Scott know what that is? Since he's a pilot as well. Yeah, Scott might. He goes up there and checks it out. He's going to run up and check it out. It's going on, Marie. All right. The uh, ship is reporting and recording a distress signal here on planet. Uh, looks like it's a distress signal on the planet. Ah, the yeah. overlords are watching. You know, like what direction it's in? Yep, it is showing 2,000 kilometers, give or take, west of the starport. We got a distress signal 2,000 kilometers west. say 2,000 kilometers? 2,000 kilometers. Oh, that's not far. So that's here. That's on the planet, right? Here on planet. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's a little over walking distance. So that's not the, uh, not our overlords. No, I'll say it again. It is being recorded by your right. sensors. Gotcha. Well, we've got the ATV guys. If, if, if somebody wants to go check it out. Do a thousand miles. Now you're picking up on it. A little bit more than that. Well, if we can get into that other ship, we could probably go see. Well, I mean, if we repair our ship, we can fly there. We're going to have to salvage this ship and yeah, you, you guys haven't seen any uh, through any of the, the buildings you've been in, or hasn't been any ship supplies. We're gonna have to cannibalize the ship next to us. How yeah. long would repairs yeah. take? Yeah, did we find anything on any of these bodies we pulled out? No, they've been burned. There's no personal effects on them. Any like little metal insignias that say captain? Uh, I need all the eyeballs. Yeah, how, how, what kind of condition are the eyeballs in? <laughs> Same condition as the fingerprints. They're gone. If the guns on our ship got into the ship next to us. All right, well, this was not worth it. All right, hop in, Skeggins. Let's, let's see I what this puppy can do. Down in the pit. I wasn't wasting my time. Damn. All right. Oh, damn. Wait, but before you get in, just a, just a second. Before you, before we get in, we're gonna have to take a minute here. Cause you smell really bad. Sorry, brother. Uh, sorry. I understand. In my environmental suit, do they have like a, a hose in the ATV shop to hose down the vehicle and hose me down? That's now we're possible. cooking with fire. Let's go hose you down. What about fire? You not you ain't setting my ass on fire. What? I said hose you down. I said we're oh. cooking with fire. Oh, we're cooking. Now with we're fire. cooking with fire. She's gonna set me on fire. Hell no. No, I'm trying to get rid of the smell. That would just create a whole nother slew of smells that I can't imagine standing next to these burnt bodies are, are much better. Here you go. You just have a drink off of this, get all sippy sippy, nice and warm, and I'll hit you with the hose back up here. All right, so we're gonna go back up here to the camp, and I'm gonna hose them off. All right, you got skagging cleaned off of the, uh, you know, the sludge and you know, body parts. 
All right. When we get back to the ship, just 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 give your clothes to Alfred. He'll take care of it. I assume you're with me in the... Okay, cool. You're with me. Um, we have like a chain or something in the hold. Maybe chain up to a piece of the ship and then Take the other piece of chain and put that on this, uh, I don't know what this, this ATV and, you know, maybe pull the door open, just massage it open. Uh, they don't really have, uh, like a surface, they're, they're perfectly smooth, right? They're not going to have, uh. Anything to break the aerodynamics for entry in the in the atmosphere and such. All right, did someone say they had a blowtorch? If uh, wouldn't a blowtorch not be that effective if it's, it's designed to go into the atmosphere? Because Actually, I think they said it was a cutting torch. Yeah, you know, I would think that the, the bottom of it, though, would be resilient to a cutting torch. I, I mean, it would take hours. But maybe the top of a ship, it, it doesn't need to uh, withstand that, that kind of force or the heat. Or we went up to the uh, front window. <laughs> Bring it. The viewport. Does it have a window? To the, the court of the drawings, they do. Which, in my sci-fi sensibility, is ridiculous. It's not like glass. Maybe it's like a see-through metal or something. Either way, we have found our weak point. Still need to know, do we have that cutting torch? Kelvin, was that you that might have had a cutting torch? I got a tool kit. We do have the tool shop inside the ship. I imagine they got a cutting rig in there. A fab shop? I'm not sure what they call it on the schematics. That works for me. That doesn't work. Maybe he used like the laser rifle that I have to like try and cut it open. All right. I, I mean, I got it. some grenades. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't planning on using them until it has breach charges, but I mean, guess it's time to get crafty. Is there anything technical you want to do for this blowtorch, or are you guys ripping into it? I could use my... I'm going to use my mechanical knowledge to try and find a good point to start up. Yeah, you and Skagen, yeah. I'll let you set the difficulty. Yeah, I, I'm going to set it. Uh, Skagen's got a, something you should... He wants to bring up, I think. I think that's a good point, Skagen. Uh, the ship's got internal power, and the computer and security locks are running on internal power on the ship. We short the power out, so the power fails. So will the comps and the locks, and we might be able to get it open in. Yeah, we could try that first. I mean, the worst that happens is 
It doesn't work. Can we hack into the computer and make it open the uh, doors? No, I don't, I'm not trying that. You can. Yeah, the only, so the only computer system you saw was that biometric scanner. There was nothing external other than that. Let me do it like remotely. I, I'm going to make a decision that this thing isn't transmitting something that would allow uh, a hack into it. Okay. Do I see anything electrical around that I could maybe possibly hook up to the ship to try and short the ship? And there are uh, grounding straps for this for this airfield. Uh, that's for electrostatic discharge mostly. That might be the best avenue of approach if you get if you think of something creative that cause that. Well, there has to be some kind of external power uh, panels, not power external panel, panels that you can get to. Because if you ever are just floating dead in space, you have to be able to do zero g to be able to get to some shit, huh? I mean, I'm thinking about that. I don't know. I don't know if they would create something that would require you to spacewalk to make a repair to an electronic system. I mean, maybe uh, access some kind of conduit that's... Uh, like it would have to be like panel. under a panel or something, yeah. Yeah, like a, yeah like a service panel? Yeah, just to access the conduit that's routing the power and just disconnect it and short it out yeah. there. You know, nothing permanent, no permanent damage or nothing. Yeah, I'll, or, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go along with my av aviation background. There's probably something that you could apply ground power to to run the systems when no one's sitting in the, uh, you know, running the APU. I was just about to say, I know in the nose of a jet, you know, you got that computer right there. So maybe somewhere. Yeah, yeah so this yeah, so this thing will have a receptacle for, uh, you know, ground power units to, to power this ship when it's undergoing maintenance. Usually it happens when it's docked, et cetera. You'd have to dry dock to do yeah. something. Yeah, but it doesn't, yeah, but it doesn't mean that panel's not there. So you do have the, uh, the receptacle that, that that receives the uh, external power units. It's the ATV to kind of backfeed, just do the short. Mm. Yeah, but I don't, that's the biggest thing. What were the fuel systems ran off of? So that reactor system, it was, uh... Let me go back and get the actual description because I don't want to misspeak. Well, if we tie the power system into the ground, it should short it out and make it a dead fault. It should just trip the breakers on the inside of the ship. No, we have to right, but do we need to unhook our ship if we're going to do it that way? Well, yeah, so it don't backfeed, you mean? Yeah. Well, were we pulling fuel from that ship or were we pulling from number two there on the map, fuel tanks and processor access yeah number two yeah number two is where uh, we were getting fuel but if yeah, we so could get a power from there to the ship yeah you got to be careful with that because all the ground systems are going to be a uh, continuous ground system so you don't get differential and potential for some kind of fault or something like that and they start arcing in between grounds and tear some shit up we're, oh, I was going to say, we're on a military base. I'm not too worried about that, but it's not a military base. Um, so that reactor, I'm just reading it. It uses a fuel mix of, of hydrogen and oxygen, and it separates, you know, the net cycles and refills the airfield fuel tanks. Uh, Tommy's just heading back because since he's no help up here, I'm going to start grabbing all the uh, food supplies that we found. 
the ATV to bring them back. Okay, loading up on the food. Yep, and anything else there that looked cool. Just, I'm really not much help with the getting the ship working, so I'll start grabbing the supplies that we kind of spotted when we were searching when we searched around. So there was 600 rations uh, per day. So if we were to, you know, go D and D style, that would be times three, eighteen hundred individual rations. If it were to be broken down like that, but some of it is perishable. It was in a uh, a refrigerator system. You will be able to have a lot of that on the ship, most likely. That's all right. We can sell some of it when we get where we're going. And let me. I gotta follow up again, guys. Did, did you guys? I guess I should take. Was it all the weather stuff? I have an environmental suit. I don't know what that does for me. Yeah, I just offering uh, all the temperature, epidermal simulate. So that yeah. should be that's in that good to negative thirty. I have a heat suit, a coverall light garment that's battery powered, lasts for 12 hours, and goes to negative 60. The reason I asked, there's going to be a lot of this, this stuff I'm sharing the image, a lot of that's laying around. Uh, you know, in the hab, hab area and in the admin buildings, you'll be able to accumulate this kind of stuff. Ah, yes, we. So, is there anybody that hurt. didn't? I mean, the tent would be good, you know, the climbing gear. So yeah, if I find the tent and climbing gear, I'll, I'll grab all that too. Yep, that's all available. All right. Let's write it down, or do we do parcels? Is that a thing? There, yeah, there's no parcels for this in the thing. They're pretty travelers, pretty loose about about items, drops. It's it's kind of more of an honor system. So if you guys say you grab two tents, I need one of you to put in two tents, or two of you to put in one tent. What are those uh, hexagonal things? And I really don't know what they are. Maybe they're like warming packets, you know, you put in your boots and your gloves. It's really, it's undefined. They didn't actually describe them at all. All right, so I got 600 yeah, exactly. days with the food, two tents, and two climbing. We could do six six sets of cold weather gear in case as backups or whatever. So did the uh, admin building joke get anything out of that? Did it have a comm station or anything? It does have a comm station. It has a comms relay. The way messaging system works, though, uh, so there would have to be a courier or a, even a, a probe that enters the system, and that data is automatically transmitted to it. And then, it's, then when it makes it faster than light travel, then when it lands to its next location is when it transmits that data. So the system of Mithril. So there would be like a recording. Said, maybe so should. 
messages on the hard drive and whatnot, right? Yeah, if there were an SOS or anything like that, yeah. I was thinking if you were going to the, if you wanted to start transmitting, it's going to, the transmission will start now and you're reliant on other people coming through system to get it. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking that I was either A, going to rip out the hard drive or B, just download it on the ship. Yeah, I mean, you get an external storage, you know, hard drive, you just copy it. Uh, just real quick, guys, this system, the Mithril's in, does have one gas giant and six other worlds. This is the only one of note. And it Lord. is uh, classified as a red dwarf star system. Uh, Daniel, I guess you want to try to short out that system and see what we got with the doors? Yeah, yeah, I give it a shot. Okay, I'm going to set the difficulty to 10 because you're going to use the system in a way it wasn't designed. Electronics. Yep, go ahead. All right. Nothing happens, uh, which is, I'm not sure that you would, I mean, no, no smell of uh, roach to electronics or anything happens. The, uh, iris, well, I don't think that worked, guys. The iris and the uh, scanner would still have power, right? Yeah. Can uh, someone else try it, or is it just? Uh... I'll take one more. I know maybe I, I don't know if I thought it or mentioned it out loud. I could not find a rule on doing assists like we do in D and D. If anybody knows of it, let me know. Could I just use my mechanic skill to try to do that? I was gonna say I think that's when you do uh, you stack skills again, but yeah, you just have to like explain how you do it. Yep, that works for me. Um, okay, so I only have like, it's like a regular electronics or is it remote ops, computers, or comms? Uh, would not be computers or comms, no. Anybody just want to smash it? Yeah, say so yeah, say. So, but nothing, nothing stops the cutting torch from going into work. Yep. You just, just don't disable they will the security systems or anything. Is that going to be a mechanic use? Yeah, we'll start with a mechanic. That makes the most sense, I think. Well, let me get this. Uh, uh, this. Here we go. Got it. Oh, yeah. All right, then y'all get a uh, nice big uh, chunk of the skin of the ship out and gains entrance in. Guys, I'm in. Make sure you ain't got no unwanted guests in there. I'm guessing how far, pit, yeah, how far away from the ramp am I? I guess where did you make the cut? I, I really didn't ask where you were doing it at. Honestly, it would have been close to the machine or close to the ramp. 
Maybe even the turret, to be honest. They gotta be able to reload that somewhere. Yeah. I mean, where were you? Where you decided to make that cut is where you're at. With the thirteen, that will matter. All right, I'm by the ramp. Okay. I guess if it's all right, I'll go in with Danielle to make sure they uh they have backup case there's trouble. Yeah, Scott's gonna go in too. I was going to come open the door for you guys. <laughs> that would work, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so the power system is still on, which means the door would actually activate. Uh, the, the, uh, the ramp does lower for you guys. All right, well, let's look around and see if we can find anybody. the ship's computer systems to see if there's like a log or anything like that. Yeah, so the part of the, the system security, once a, the system has been breached, it does lock out the computer system. They are still turned on. Let's see if we can't find password written down somewhere. I hate that there's like at least a good 20% chance you're go that that should be a possibility. Oh, I know. That's there's always that one person. There's always one person that writes down all their information. So, I guess oh. we're checking for the password. But they always put it somewhere safe like the right hand drawer of their disk. So, check that first. Actually, in my experience, you first check the yellow post-it note that's stuck on the flipping <laughs> monitor. Yeah, that's a good point. That, uh, was it when Hawaii had that earthquake and they had the interview with the guy at the weather service or something like that? And the entire time, he had the password on his monitor while they were interviewing him on a, on a post-it note. Hey, and it usually says, log in. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know how many laptops I get back from users and I get them back. And the password is on a post-it note on the laptop, right as you lift it up. Boom. There it is, sitting right next to the mouse pad. Like, well, that's okay. Those are at that. least the people that took the time to change it from from the password actually being password. Or, you know, your name backwards or whatever your company's default Shit, is. if I didn't set it to do that, they wouldn't do that. So yeah, look for the password written down somewhere. <laughs> hey, do we have plans on taking the ship or no? So I was gonna ask that question. Like instead, I mean, there's a hole in it now, though. Yeah, this thing is not uh, space worthy at the moment. Good point. Well, we do have a workshop yeah, but... while they're doing what they're doing on the ship, I could go to their workshop and start fabbing up a patch. That's true. If you think you could do that, yeah, you you can jump and do that and we'll see what we can do about getting this thing going. Well I gotta do I do gotta sorry, I do gotta do this for scale because it does make it clear in the module. You know, this it's probably closer to what the size of the ship is. It's not going to fit in any of those buildings. Shit. Word. Yep. We're, we're, yep. We're leaving in this. Well, I mean, yeah. how big is ours? Is it the same? Yeah, I thought no. this was the same size as ours. It is, yeah. It's just, it's another scout courier. Yours, I just put them on the map for reference for you guys to move around. You, Your, your ship isn't three times as big as your token. That's not the case. It is... Well, I didn't you think the floor plan, it was. Larger, yeah. But the, I mean, but the the buildings here on site, you know, building six, seven, and five, and four, those are scale. Oh, those are little buildings. I guess. Did we uh, find the password? No, no password. 
try and hack into the computer. Okay. All right. Now I'm setting because the firewall is set because of the breach. I didn't make the task difficulty of 14. Get out of here. Nice. Sleep done. All right. Captain Scott nice. Norman breaks system online. That's why I got that man a drink earlier, because he works way better inebriated. <laughs> I love it. Sorry, guys, I closed my story. I gotta find where I left off. Okay, so this is um, what you're able to garner because we're gonna. I'm just gonna make it the first like ten minutes before we go deep diving in this for Gorman. Is the uh, the ship is a Sword World ship uh, operated by a pirate group, uh, most likely uh, some extremists that have their their own views against the uh, Imperium. There is no ship manifest on who operated this. Uh, whoever whoever was running this was careful to keep the records clean. And I think that's it. Just in the you know the quick the quick couple minutes you've logged in. I don't know how long you want to start going through this. Well, I guess we got time, so just gonna be thorough about it. Stay back about an hour. All right, so this is operated by a mercenary company who were uh, hired to attack a, it's called the, the Bothader family. I'll spell that out. Any chance Calvin would have known that name from his uh, foray into piracy for a few years there? You, man, I want to say make a history check, but I don't even know what we got. Yeah, no, that's kind of why I, <laughs> I don't know how you do that. I'm going to say no, because I don't, I don't think they're that big of a deal. Um, and they're, it appears that this Bothader family was researching something that they want, that these mercenaries are hired to keep secret. What was that? So the merc we, the mercenaries were hired to to kill this family uh, because they are researching something that whoever hired them wants to keep a secret. Uh, but that detail is not divulged in the computers. And 
And this is a scout courier ship, right? Yeah, it is for the back, lack of a better anything else I have. But it's not, this is obviously not, uh, you know, the paint the paint job and, you know, the transponder is missing. Uh, it, it is the oh, ship. Oh, you said the magic words. Transponder missing, and I bet the black box don't work. Yeah, this is the way the way this thing has been reconfigured. You would not be authorized to dock in most uh, tech level, higher tech level stations at all. If we could get that black box, and if we could get paid for it. on criminal activity might be well I was thinking since the ship's already configured for criminal activity maybe I don't maybe we get both ships running and we occasionally break down somewhere near Mithril and disappear for a week or two damn I hate when that happens yeah me too it's almost like we'd have to fly this somewhere randomly on this planet and, like, cover it in snow. That'd be a shame if that happened. I mean, we're, we're kind of getting to the end, but I'll, I mean, I'll say this. I mean, the beacon is still still going 2,000 mile, uh, kilometers west of here. You have two ships that are now no longer uh, space-worthy. Why, what, what happened to our ship? Oh, yeah, that's right. We crashed. Never mind. Your jump drive is now inoperable. I mean, you could get, you make it out to, uh, you know, uh, orbit, but you're not going anywhere. All right, we'll start taking down this jump drive and putting it in our ship. Well, we could, as long as we don't leave the atmosphere, we could take this ship 2,000 miles over, check out the, the ping. But what about the passengers? We leave... Yeah, I don't think your Yelp review is going to get uh, any better doing this. Cut yeah, off 100 credits. Look, they already paid us 500 more credits than what we thought we were going to get. Tell them they'll each get 100 credits back for the inconvenience. <laughs> or we show them the pit. We already got paid, right? Nobody's going to know we didn't drop them off if they don't survive. What about all that talk about... Uh, Except the people TV they're registered with on the planet that we're going to. We had to put what? in a flight plan and a passenger manifest. Well, it looks like they got off here in Mithril and they didn't get back on. We don't know where they went. It's weird. Yeah, actually, technically, uh, Scott Gorman has access to those computers, too, here on this station. The ones that track passengers coming and going. Look at that. But for real though, we can just tell them, say, hey, we'll cut, you know, 100 credits off. You guys cool with that? Just chill here for a little bit. We'll be What's back. The, uh... We did just give them a bunch of food. I mean, so even if we're late, it's not like. They have food now. I was thinking the same thing. I just wasn't going to say it out loud. Uh, Marines are rocks. So, we just, you want to just take this ship? You don't want to repair our ship? There's a beacon 2,000 miles away. Do we want to go check that out? We can always we, come back with parts to fix ours. 
correct. And with this one already flying dark, well, our, we, as far as the scout services know, we're here. Are we going to have a? Bit. Are we going to have a problem birthing in any place though? Oh yeah. Well, I thought we were just going to use this ship to go two thousand miles, check out that, the beacon, see what it is, see what it's about. If it's nothing, whatever. If it's something, awesome. And then we come back here, fix our ship, and take these people home. There could be money for us more there. more about the beacon than I do. Okay, well, a big pile of money, do you think it's going to go anywhere since there's already a beacon on it? Well, then stay here with the people. Or we can fix I just ship. don't see why we don't fix our ship and then take our ship to over there. And yeah, if there is it. a big pile of money, put that big pile of money on our ship. what I was thinking, like, we fix our ship first, go out there, check it out. I mean, I could leave this patch off of this ship, because right now, before it's sealed up, it is not spaceworthy. You know, like we do, used to do in old days, you know, rip off a distributor cap so it's not, so it don't run? We could do the same thing here and come back and fix this other ship. Well, guys, since, since there, there is significant content enough where I don't, where you don't have to make that decision now. We could we could uh, role play it between sessions in the Discord chat on what you guys want to do. So we are nearing our four hour limit. I was gonna say, do we have the expertise to fix ours anyway? I thought that was part of the whole thing. We we kind of need some. Uh, technically, diagnostic. Work. We haven't done diagnostic roles yet to figure out exactly what's wrong. We, uh, it hasn't been determined if you need a new engine yet or if it's a part of the engine that can be replaced or repaired. Uh, the more the more important thing, though, in my opinion, is uh, the, um, the sonogram on the, uh, the, the structure of the ship for that hard landing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I totally f say we figure out a way to get off the planet first and back to where we need to go whether we take the ship that has that's the dark ship and we fit it with our box or whether we strip it and fix ours doesn't matter i'd say that's more important than whatever is 2000 miles away well also from a financial perspective uh, we have a mortgage on our ship, right? So what happens if we just leave it here? Are we going to still be We still for pay for it. We're still contracted to pay for it. Well, so it doesn't matter if we take the other ship. We're still going to be paying for our ship. That is correct. Right. Yeah, actually, technically, you'd be paying maintenance costs on two ships uh, unless you defer on one, and then, you know, then we start getting into crazy... You know, chump drive minus six rolls, stuff like that for neglect. I mean, I would do want to go check out the other sensor or whatever the thing is. I just, I want to go check it out after we get one of these ships up and running and get us in air. All right, let's, um, Skagen wants to make a uh, diagnostics check. We'll probably do that, and we'll end it on that so you guys know exactly what's wrong with the engine. Yeah, nothing too difficult or anything just to see, because I doubt I have the ability to uh, repair the damn thing. So we just knew when you landed you didn't have any spare parts for repairs. So I did set the task difficulty. It'll be pretty easy to diagnose with power. Uh, what do we roll for that? 
I was going to make it a mechanic or engineer. Should be engineer technically, but I'll take a I'll take a mechanic as well. One or however you want to role play that. There we go. All right, so Danielle, the um. I don't have a goofy space name for what it is. I just know what's broken. It's the um, the system that injects the hydrogen into real space to create the wormhole is what has been damaged. So without repairing that, you're not jumping. The the part can technically yeah the hydrogen exciter. Now the uh, the part uh, would require a full engine breakdown. So there's an eye level repair. So to get the part up the other ship and install it on this ship would be a bunch of chain of successfuls. And failure just means now you have broken down engines. Damn, so we need like a master mechanic. Or we get the other ship flying. Yes, yeah, need any more information do you think while well, we're we're still all together oh sounds like we're headed to where we need to go with the dark ship and we're gonna have to come back i have a question just about training before we wrap oh yeah how, how many weeks from uh where we started to Mithril. Now let me get up my map again. Is it, are you just doing like a week of Parsec or a week of... Yeah, I'm doing seven because it's it's essentially six to eight days. I'm just keeping it a solid seven for easy bookkeeping. So you guys it, made... Oh, go ahead. It's eight weeks of training too, right? I was going to bring up my book on that, but I'm going to verify to Olympia. I thought it was four weeks. No, one second. Four I think, I think uninterrupted weeks. I thought, it, I thought it was higher than four. Could be. Also, I'm, I'm learning things that are just not essential. Clearly, we need to start learning about flying machines. Yeah, somebody I'm, should really learn engineering. I'm about to learn engineering. <laughs> like, the next chance I can get, I might buy an engineering book and just read the book. Yeah, that's well, what I'm saying. I didn't engineering that time in the last month, but I don't have enough time to actually get the skill yet. Wait, run that by me again? Remember, like, when we had, we were between jumps, and we had, like, the downtime, and some people were, like, messing with the, uh, the back suit. Right, right. Those were the in like engineering to try and learn. Right, so that would get like you, however much training it'll take, that'll give you at least get you to a zero, right? Yeah, depending on how like you want to interpret it. I, but yeah, that was what he was doing. The last session was uh, trying to learn engineering. I went with combat, which is. I still need you guys, half you guys, I guess, were military guys. I'm, I was just like a rambling space hippie. So thought I better learn to shoot this gun. I went on rabbit hunts with a bunch of rich folk. That's how I learned to shoot. <laughs> so, so, did, so was that last session enough to learn engineering? Do we need more sessions? 
Well, so that's what I had that we got three weeks last time, and that's why yep. I was kind of curious. This jump, this, well, these multiple jumps this time, how many weeks did we get? And I don't yes. recall how many it took, but I, I did think it was something like eight to ten. Yeah, that's what I got from last session was three weeks. I put three weeks into VAC suit training last time. Sorry, guys, I'm flipping through my core rule book trying to find the training, but it might be easier to actually use the one in game. That's the one I where I found it last time. First one to find out the timeline to learn a skill wins something. I haven't decided yet. Oh, I found it. I won. Uh, Eight weeks have been accumulated. When? And then, and then you still got to make the check to see if you actually learned this skill. Remember, on an A plus on an education. Yep, you got to make a yeah two d six. One two. You guys' jump was interrupted. No, it wasn't interrupted. You, you failed your jump from Steel to Olympia. So one, two. You guys got three more weeks this time. Weeks, and I can make a check. How many more weeks did we get? Three more this session. Three, so if you've been training, you should be at six weeks. At least Mithril had no birthing cost or fuel cost. That's true. So yeah, so you guys collected so far 100 credit debt to Enos and Kalabog combined for the docking and birthing. But uh, I think in the next two weeks, I'm going to take a deep dive into how trade works. If you actually, have any, we, any ideas, let me know. Yeah, I'm about to watch some videos on it, actually, as soon as this is done. But uh, actually, we've incurred so far 4,100 credits in costs, 50 from each berthing, and 2,000 for each fuel. That is correct, yes. Wow, I hear you. You got a Google sheet for all that? Uh, actually, it's an Excel, but yes, it is a spreadsheet. <laughs> if you don't mind sharing that when you're sometime in the next two weeks so the guys can see uh, operating costs of a scout ship? Uh, no problem. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a little unrefined. You give me like three or four missions to kind of get like an average of what we're really doing, and then I'll have like a nice one. Right, sounds good. Right now, it's mostly just kind of notes, honestly. But yeah, I kind of plan on building a, a, a ship ledger. Funny you say that, because as we were having all these discussions, I was t 
trying to read about stuff, and it sounds like that seems to be a a normal theme for a traveler game. <laughs> Somebody keeping a ledger. I threw in a couple links there, Greg, as far as the trade goes. I don't know if they'll help or not. I didn't get to read them to in depth. Yeah, yeah no, I and if I find yeah. if I find any good videos, I'll I'll throw them in chat also. Hey, so I did have one one other question. So I was I was looking at that um, that website you shared, Greg, so we could calculate trade goods and things. <clears throat> Is there a certain age or whatever that we're in that I should use? Yeah, I was trying to look that up. So I know we're in the third age of the Imperium. So I was using the new age, thinking the third age meant that. Okay. Well, we could be in the golden age. Um, I'll get I'll get back to you on that. I'm gonna do whatever. As long as I kind of use the same one for all of them, though, we feel like it'll be fairly straightforward. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was doing. I was just making sure I stuck in the same age when I did it. Yeah. But yeah, we're whatever the current setting is for Mongoose Traveler Second Edition is what we're gonna use. I, just, I don't. I barely know anything about the lore for this. Thank you guys for coming by and watching us. I had a shitload of technical difficulties. I apologize for that. You didn't miss, you know, much. You might have missed a map or two or something like that here or there, but not much. But uh, thank you again. And remember, if you like what you saw, hit that like, hit that follow button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you know when we come on. Um, the notification or the our social medias were all in the beginning. I check them out. Go back to the beginning; they're all right there. Even DM Greg's are right there. His are easy though. He's only got a couple. Um, yeah. So thanks. We appreciate it. I uh, can't wait to see you guys in two weeks again for some more uh, Traveler. Next week, Monday.